Oh my gosh, I gotta immediately, we're, we're immediately going to the overhead desk. Go, go, go. Look at it, ah, it's working! I'm picking up something! It's the ATN! The Amateur Television Network! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Welcome to the after chat. Look at that! Something is happening! And, and largely that's, uh, the, the signal quality is likely on my end because of the, uh... So whomever did that, Thank you very much. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Woo! RF technologies. That's pretty that's pretty cool. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I, I looked over and I saw just like all this activity. I was like, oh my gosh, is that ATV? Click video and then boom. So again, if you're Yeah, so again, there's the receive and transmit side of the, the 905, and so we're receiving right there. Look at that! Ooh, yeah. I don't know why. The, the concept of shooting video over amateur, like, radio is so cool to me. And that's the wrong song. What is going on here? Get that out of here. I got so excited, I just immediately hit live. I came back to my desk, and I was like, what is going on? Hold on. There we go. Now we got the right song. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, whomever kicked off that repeater, cheers to you, bud. Hold on, I just gotta go adjust the rabbit ears, the rabbit ears a little bit. Hold on, that's going on. <laughs> Again, I'm on an Omni, and I'm many miles from whomever this signal is coming from. Is my, is my guess. The fact we get anything is pretty impressive. That's awesome. Love it. Let's enhance, 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 enhance. There we go. Where's the border? There it is. I can't. So. Um, so th this is also a bit of my, like, naivete with all this stuff, right? I don't have the appropriate antenna for uh, 23 centimeters, which is the, the band that... So they're off the air now, but... Uh, that's, like, I, I, have, I, have, I can receive it, and, and that's part of the issue. The signal's not very good, because I don't have the right antenna for this. I, I put a signal stick on the top of that thing. We just, re we just received that on a signal stick. Had I had a better antenna, we, we probably would have done a lot better with that. Um, I I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> I did build a... I, I should have probably just put my 23 sums antenna I built on top of that thing. I don't think that would have done well, though. I don't think that would have worked well. That's just my take. My, my hot take on... on... On this, this like monstrosity that I built. <laughs> it's a ground plane antenna for 23 centimeters. It, it's a perfect match. Oh yeah, somebody's got to go in again. Yeah, all right. And no, I'm not going to climb up to the uh, the roof to change the antenna out. But if I, I, I honestly can see having this on the roof. To be honest with you, this this whole this whole setup. I think that now that I'm seeing this receiving on a signal stick, that I uh, I would get a proper 23 sems antenna. I think I might. This changed my whole like will he won't he about about the radio because I love the idea of amateur television. I think this is just super cool because I'm gonna like feed the odd, I'm gonna feed it into like a computer so I can do like active green screen keying. Josh is on the moon today, transmitting with amateur television. Hello, hello, earthlings. <laughs> it's time to get on the air with amateur television. All right, welcome to the after chat, everybody. That was an explosive start to the after chat. Let's say hi to all of our friends on the Discord. Well, we let's just leave that running in the background. I think that's that's really cool. So whomever keyed that up, I don't know if that was for me or not, but I'll take it. I'll take it, sir. Thank you so much. All right, let's hop on down here. Oh, a tiny after chat. It's gonna be a, a close Bree! group of friends. A Bree! How's it going? All right. I just brought up the uh, the. Bigger, do you notice there, Josh, the bigger SD card on 905 compared to the 705? What do you think there? Full-size SD card. That's how I can download all my 4K footage, right, that I'm going to get in and out of it. Guess so. <laughs> I'm, okay, I mean, you're ambitious. 
Yeah, no, I'm no, I'm just kidding. But uh, I I like uh, the full size SD cards personally. Uh, personally, I I don't really like the the minis. Uh, you can usually move data faster, and I'm wondering if that's why they had to go with the uh, the larger size is just the data throughput. That's my guess. Yeah, What's all I think your the minis thoughts? Are, are, are restricted in um, in size, but also data throughput for like photography. Uh, data throughput specifically, and and so if you're if you're thinking about trying to capture something as wide banded as uh, some of the super high frequency stuff like amateur television, so if you're trying, you know what? Wait, I didn't even. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. So, can I record ATV? Will it? I know there's no SD card, but like, will it record the T? I need an SD card. We're gonna, if I have to record white noise, I'll record white noise. Good enough. This will do. It's probably going to balk at this, but... Could you record... Will it spit out like a MPV or a, a mob or something? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I didn't know why I didn't think about this to do this before. Ah! I don't know. You can't get the staff. Ah, oh, Fat32. Should I format this? I don't know what's I don't know what's on this card. Should I gamble it? I'm gonna gamble it. This is your conscience, Josh. Don't do it. It it uh, it's got to get done. Definitely won't do it without knowing what's on there. It's got to get done. We have to do it. it. Send it. Oh. Yes. Hope it's not financial data. Oh, and it wouldn't be if it was in the shack. All right, here we go. <laughs> I told you to format it. Wait, what's going on? Yes. Yes. It's like... Yes. Yes. Isn't like the first rule of flash memory, don't put important things on flash memory for long-term use? Oh, I yeah, mean, no. This would be like video clips I didn't download or something. So it's not formatting. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut this off for a second. Let's turn it back on. FAT32 formatted. Interesting. Okay. That's a uh, limitation on maximum size. Hmm. Okay. That could not, that might not be fully implemented. Yeah. See, it's not letting me format. Um, so let's see. What did it complain about? It said that it needed to be. Wait, what? Uh, okay. I don't have anything that's, re that's formatted in FAT32. But it's not letting me format it. Uh, oh, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I'll just put it in the 705 and I'll format it. Nope. <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> uh, you know how many micro SD cards I accidentally swallow a year? I'm just kidding. I don't do that. Do you have an adapter that Goes from this micro to the it, big one. It, it does. Yeah, I do. I just, uh, I don't. We got the liquid tab moved over, so it won't format. Hmm. On the big SD cards, there's the little white notch that you can flip that right protects it. No, nope, it's not. Cassette tape notch. Um, yeah, the Ray Protect notch, not the metal notch. And of course, I recently went through and like moved a lot of my stuff uh, so that I could put things in the appropriate bags and put those bags in the appropriate places. And I don't now have that stuff like localized where it should be. So I don't have my little USB uh, reader that I could format on. Um, the Question computer. about the 905. Go for Any it. idea if the connection to the RF unit standard Ethernet? Can I use a standard power over Ethernet network switch to connect the RF unit to the radio? I don't know. 
I was looking through the advanced manual for that, and it actually does not say anything about Ethernet or anything, anything Ethernet like for the RF uh, for the RF connection between the head unit and the uh, and the RF deck. I am. Uh... I I. Uh... Hmm. So so here's my thing. It's like, what's the point of it? You need the head unit. So if you can't interface with the, the RF unit, what does it matter? Is it like if you want to put an amplifier in between and, and then you're going to go like long distances? Okay. VPN remote operate. Oh. Ray did say that the um, the RF... Uh, the RAS Bass One or whatever it is, the remote operation software is going to be updated for it, but that would require both the both the head unit and the and the RF deck to be directly connected. No, but I really like where you're going with this remote VPN usage. So you could put this in a remote location and remote into it from your home network via the seven via the nine hundred five. I see what you're throwing down. That's not a bet. You know what? I'm gonna text. I'm gonna text Ray right now on that one. Run wire shock to check. I don't. Yeah, I. I'm not gonna plug that in right now. But yes. Okay. Yes. Um. So good question. If someone remotes the RF unit and wants to VPN from the 905 somewhere else, would it be standard PoE over Ethernet? Cool idea. Big if true. That's what I'll put. Big if true. Big like if true. Like with a router level VPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. No, you're, you're, you're totally... I, so, I, I, I don't want to say, like, I would be shocked if it didn't do that. I, I don't know why they would come up, cook up a new standard for PoE, but maybe it requires a higher voltage or something. I, it's a good question. That's, uh, yeah. Oh, nice. We got Evan is dining at an in and out so i'm sure that will lead to some uh some some chats later all right well everybody welcome to the after chat thanks for joining us out here so how this works it's pretty simple um we take your questions and comments uh hopefully we've got some people that are new for the first time but given the nature of this stream it was kind of in the weeds a little bit for a lot of folks um but if this is your first time you're joining us on the hammer deal crash course two things one, we'd love it if you said hi and introduce yourself. No pressure to do that if you don't want to. And two, if you have a ham radio question, maybe you're just starting out as a ham or you know, maybe you're just finding us for the first time and would like to ask a question, we'd love to hear that too. So if there's anybody here for the first time that would like to say hi and uh, ask a question, come now. And for those that are new to Discord, you sometimes have to bind a PTT button if you're on the Windows or on a computer. Or you can use the PTT button on your phone, but you have to PTT. We treat it like a repeater here. Go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead. I'm uh, My name's William, um, W9MKE. Uh, I just got my vanity. Uh, three weeks ago, I got my tech. And uh, first time joining the uh, after, after stream stream. Very nice. So is that uh, W9 make? Is that the idea? Well, I'm from Milwaukee. So oh. W9 is kind of Wisconsin. And yeah. that's like Milwaukee. Mm. Right on. Well, do you, uh, well, thanks for joining us. Do you have any questions or anything? Um, not much. Uh, you know, I uh, figured uh, the full size SD card was recording video. And then I guess if you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, are able to format it, you'd be able to do that. And then, um, yeah. I think you are 100% correct. It, it Once we get started a little bit, I'll probably take a quick break whenever I have to go to the restroom, and um, I'll grab the SD reader and bring it back in, and we'll do it. We'll do a format on the on the PC, and then we'll drop it into the uh, the radio, and we'll, we'll test it that way for video. 
Okay, anybody else out here for the first time that'd like to say hi or ask a question, come now. And it, it doesn't have to be related to the 905. Any new person ham radio question. That's that's our that's our primary stated goal in the after chat is to help people get started in amateur radio. I try and make a lot of videos, but I know that like there are questions left and unanswered, and that's why we're here. So go for it. Um, I do have a question. Um, are you aware of the uh, QRZ1 thing still going on? Because uh, I just did that. Um, and then it's for anybody that has their license for six months. And then you can get the whole package with the cable and the RT system and the radio for, uh, I think it's like 33 shipped total. Yeah, let me let me pull that up because that's a that's a really good recommendation. By the way, there's a link in the description of this video to Gigaparts uh, for anybody that wants to get anything off of there. Let me pop open the website really fast so you can take a look but uh there it is uh, qrz1 is an inexpensive radio if you are new to amateur radio though you can get that set up for free and i believe it includes the programming cable which is a really nice thing to have um so where is the link for the new hands so i i believe they changed it to like 21 bucks it's qrz.com slash jumpstart Oh, okay. It it that's right. It's through QRZ. Oh, so Gigaparts also has the link. So let's see. Go to QRZ. So I will drop this in the chat for anybody that's new to ham radio, or if you're interested and you're like you just got your license kind of thing. I'll pin that so you guys can find it. But it'll bring you to this uh this web page. And if you go to apply at qrz.com slash jumpstart, let's go ahead and pull that up. Uh, okay. Wait, hold, hold, please. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and log in. It's going to say, you're, you're an old ass ham. Get out of here. <laughs> but I just want to know how to explain to people. There's hold a up. new story on the front uh, page of QRZ that, that has it like a whole right up. Hold on. I've got two factor. I have two factor on my QRZ because, you know, because <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> Hold, please. All right, here we go. Is that going to let me in? Oh, come on. All right, so yeah, I'm not eligible, of course, but let me let me pull it up there. Uh, not eligible is only for amateur radio operators issued in the last six months. So they they know they can <laughs> they can read dates, uh, but if you go to the link, which um, the, the one that I dropped for um, for Gigaparts will take you here. If you have a QRZ account, which by the way, you have a you have an account regardless of whether you actually make an account or not on QRZ. They just kind of scrape the FCC database and they make an account for you based on your call sign. So there's basic information that's a part of the FCC database. This is one of the reasons why I recommend you get a a PO box or a, a forwarding address that you can pick up mail at, like a virtual office kind of thing. If you you know, prefer to be somewhat anonymous within amateur radio. Uh, I believe you can get one of those forwarding offices, office spaces cheaper than getting a PO box, but that's neither here nor there. But you can make a QRZ account for free. And it's kind of like the Facebook of ham radio. Once you have that, you can go to that link that is on Gigaparts and you can possibly get a free radio if you're within six months of getting your license. And I think I'm going to start adding that to my my troll com my my comments in the beginning of the live stream to make sure people take advantage of that because that's like a, you know, win-win. What the heck? Right on. Okay, well thanks for that. Appreciate it. All right. Uh who else? Anybody else in there that would like to say hi or ask a question? Come now. Uh-oh. Millie Chan's got hot ChatGPT. What are all the band edge frequencies on the 905? Uh, there are the same edge frequencies of the FCC bands. I, I, well, let's let's test that because there's actually one band that is a shared space. So let me pull that up. Um, 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 um it is the 2300 space. So let me let me hop up to 2300. Let's see how far it goes in the weeds on 23. So if we go to 2310, oh, let's do that. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're we're into the shared use space on 2300. This should take us through to what's the upper limit? 2450 and then it should split. Is Josh going to be here through this entire thing? Well, yes. At this point I'm pot committed. We're going to spin the VFO. And yeah, that's band switch. So it, it it's all the so again it's it's all the frequencies here, and then for the twenty four hundred or the thirteen centimeters space, that is going to be shared use, but you still have access to those uh, frequencies. So there you go. Okay. All right, I'm officially I was. Oh, Jody, you magnificent person. Jody came up. <laughs> I was not, I, I was on the wrong chat on dis Discord, but uh, Jody's like, hey, d dork, do this. <laughs> let, let the other ICOM radio that's on your desktop do this. In fact, why don't I just take the SD card out of my 7610 and put it in the 705? What? Let's try that, shall we? All right, here we go. All right, here's... Here's my beat up SD card. Let's see if it let's see if it works. <laughs> Jody, you you're the best, man. You you come up with so many solutions. Come up with so many good solutions to simple problems. Oh yeah, Jody. Here we go. Yep, it liked it. All right, let's go back. Can somebody Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Somebody's doing it. Somebody's making it happen. I need that ATM. Oh, what happened here, guys? Am I on ATV? What's going on? I don't see anything. Hold on. I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just uh let's just copy it. See if we can do record start. Okay, we're recording. I don't know what this is going to give us, but let's uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're testing right now. VE2FGJ. That would be cool if we can do that. I'm super excited if we can do that. That would be awesome. So, yeah, that's, that's what we're attempting to find out right now. I would love that. All right, while we, uh, while we take a little sample, anybody else want to say hi or ask a question? Come now. What about band edge of 2 meter and 440? Okay, we can try that too. All right, that's probably enough. I'm going to stop the record. And I'm also going to explore the band edges first while I'm right here in front of the radio. Okay, let's uh, let's explore some band space. Come on. All right, let's get out of that. And oh yeah, we're oh yeah, so it just blew right through. And yeah, okay, so you hit 148 and there you go, 430. And we go to the top of 4 4 uh, 70 centimeters, should be yep, 450. Yep. There you go. Uh, 148 and 450. Yeah, uh, by the way, that's that's U.S. So depending on where you are, if you're in the U.K., for instance, it's going to be region locked differently for you. Right? And, and <laughs> who was it? It was like, I just, I just too did. And I was like, whoa, the 705 has ATV? No, it does not. It does not. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of go back and forth between saying 70 SEMS and 440, and I don't know where I, I for, 70 SEMS is a UK term. I don't know why I got wrapped up in that. I think it's because I say Z a lot of times in ham radio than Z. 
that's a personal thing just because I think it sounds better and gets picked up easier by people. That's just a personal thing. So, okay, very good. All right, who else in there has a question or you know, would like to say hi or ask a question if you're new? Nothing, huh? Well, that's good. We answered everybody's questions. I have a feeling that like this is a this is in the weeds a little bit, so you know. This is a this What is... HF antenna can you recommend for apartment? Ooh. <laughs> um Yeah. This is gonna be tough because I'm gonna throw it back to the chat GPT voice here. Um one, tell me your budget. Two, do you have a balcony? How big is that balcony? And three, like, is there a tree that's semi-adjacent that you can, like, throw a wire off into? So, formulate your response and come back. Do you have balcony? Uh, do have balcony. Okay, so that's one part. Budget's going to be important. Do have balcony. Okay, so I can start with the do have balcony. You can go nuts with ham sticks, right? MFJ makes a mount that will give you like a 45 degree angle and you can pop a ham stick on that and you can run the radial like just in the balcony space. And you could probably do it clean enough that you won't even see it because you could put the radial on like the back side of the railing so that nobody would really see it. Um, you can also put, uh, depending on how big your balcony is and depending on the band coverage that you want, you could just do like a dipole. You could possibly even do an NFED. Just know that like the closer the radiating wire is, which is also your receiving antenna, the closer it is to your home or to the apartment means it's going to pick up RFI from your own electronics and then everybody else that's in your apartment too. So not ideal, not the best solution, but that's definitely an option. And uh, adjacent tree means that you can always just fire a, a wire, a very thin wire, off into the tree and, and get on the air that way. All right. While we wait for a, possibly a return, let's... Uh, oh. Okay. I'm going to hop back over here and let's click on, uh, I believe it is record. And we can do play files. Yes. Oh, it says ATV. Does not give me, does not give me the amateur television video though. I'm guessing that if I were to plug this into a lappy top, that it's not going to give me like a video format. It's not going to show me like an MOV or anything like that. But I don't know. Like I said, we'll, uh, I'll take the SD card out at some point and I'll take the video card or the SD card out and we'll get the adapter and we'll test it. Okay. <laughs> Do a live stream war driving with the 905. That would depend on having like an output that you can plug into a laptop or something. So you can do Wi-Fi pen testing, I guess. I guess that's what, uh, what, what we're all talking about. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, no tree since I am 40 meters above ground. Should I get a tuner for random wire or a magnetic loop? Okay, well, good. So you added, all right, so you have some thoughts there. All right, so um, random wire, probably not. And it's not that I'm, a, well, I am kind of against the random wire. Traditionally, I've, I've always said like, and fed halfway for nothing. Uh Everything I'm about to tell you is going to be under the premise of go for it and try it. And you tell me what worked for you, because ultimately you're going to be the one that, you know, best tells you what the, the best solution is. But when it comes to an apartment, a lot of the times it's like get 
the antenna away as best you can. And sometimes that's just a vertical. It could be uh, if you have a stout mount, it could be that 17 foot stainless steel whip that you just drive out at a 45 degree angle. That will work. A ham stick will work. An end fed like a random wire could work. But how do you how do you make it so that it's like stiff, right? It's got to be stiff sticking out there in free space because you don't have a tree you can throw into. So if you're saying that you're going to run the wire along like maybe the, the, the ceiling area of the balcony, that could work. But the problem with that is that you're going to have a lot of adjacent noise from all the other people in the apartment. So that might not be the right solution for you in, in how you deal with it. Now, regarding a loop, yes, but, yes, but, or yes, and, uh, loops can be expensive if you're going to buy one just from one of the manufacturers. Uh, they are very good at being semi-resistant to uh, RF noise because they have such a high Q. Oh, and yeah, the high Q of a magnetic loop is 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 not great for listening. So, Sean, if and yes, Sean is right. Sean is right. If your goal is to have an antenna that you can just easily scan up and down the bands easily with your VFO, like if you're a VFO writer like I am from my shortwave days, then a, a high Q antenna like a loop may not be the right solution for you. But if you are somebody that like hunts and pounces on different frequencies to make contacts, then a loop can be okay. The problem with the loop is that you're always going to be fiddling with it. You're always going to be going in there and retuning it for the best signal response possible. And that's one of the negative aspects of a loop. Unless you go in and build like an automatic tuning loop, but even then there's a tuning cycle and time that goes into it. Um, th they work. They work pretty well, particularly at a high altitude like you are. Uh, it it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Wild Cascadia Radio. Oh, my God. All the UK listeners are losing their minds right now. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. Oh, man. Oh, hey, man. Hey, Josh, I finally got to say hello. Uh, oh, it's Jody! Jody! Yeah. Jody, yes, you, sir. you are the man. I got to tell you, there's so many times where like questions are a popping and whatever, and you go like not to the thing we're talking about, but like the deeper level that we're ultimately going to get to, and you drop a link to it or a picture. You have bailed out the live stream chat like so many times. So thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, very welcome. Yeah. So I finally get to uh, participate online. Some of the, uh, the contractual restrictions I've been under are now expired, and uh, yeah, I get to hang out a little bit more on the interwebs. So, looking forward to actually participating on a voice level now. That's awesome. One day you'll have to tell me what those contractual obligations are, but it's probably not for uh, public consumption. Because <laughs> now I'm really now curious. I'm... Why couldn't you talk? I don't understand. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it's something that you're probably familiar with in your line of work oh, as well. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, say no more. Say no more, friend. We're good. <laughs> well, I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. Uh, with that said, we'll do a little bit of celebrating because Jody's in the house. I will open a Firestone Parabola 2023. This is a stanky thick beer. Not stanky in a bad way. It's just like it's a thick boy. It's a thick stout. But we're having fun. So why not? A beer that comes in a box. Yeah. Uh, ridiculously, like, overpriced for what it is. Uh, we found this in Solvang, and I don't ever find them as cheap as they were selling it, so I bought it. I don't, I don't buy, uh, I don't buy Parabola very often anymore. But anyway, so, in, yeah, thank you. All right. Well, Jody, thanks. I, if anything comes up, fantastic. You can just hop in there and talk directly and share your links and all that stuff. So I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was actually digging in the manual for the 905 here. And yeah, it looks like it's audio only at this point for the ATV recording. So yeah, you're out of, you're out of luck. But so then the question of uh, why the standard SD card is, I guess, potentially, I mean, at the end of the day, if you think like an SDR user, you would think, okay, well, why don't we just record the entire bandwidth for replay later if you have an SD card with a higher, uh, you know, record speed, but. I don't know what their record speed is, so the choice to go with the larger size SDR is something that I haven't I haven't figured out what the answer is yet. But it's 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 on my list of interests. 
Yeah, I think you're on the right trail there. I think this machine has a lot more capability than they're letting on here in the early days. And it, frankly, yeah, recording straight IQ to the card is probably what's going to happen eventually. But uh, they're leaving the door open. Otherwise, why would you have a large format card? Right. Right. So, I mean, that's that's the that's the really fascinating thing about this radio is that it's it's living in a space that is high bandwidth. So if you wanted to capture that, you, you'd have to be pretty wide banded. And depending on what you captured, if you're catching capturing IF data or you're capturing literal, uh, you know, ATV that was that was captured on that device, then, yeah, you would need a fast capture card. I, I liked um, Ray was pretty open with it. He said, like, hey, if we don't have a ton of people that buy this, maybe we don't do a lot of updates on it. You know, I, it, there, I, I appreciate just the honesty of being like, hey, you know, we're not going to we're not going to like go nuts with these updates if there's not a ton of people that buy it. I, I mean, that's that's the realistic answer. And I, I appreciate I always appreciate Ray because he's he's usually a straight stu shooter in that sense, unless he's like literally can't say something, which, you know, sure, of course. But yeah, uh, thank you, W4WW. This is a, a, a proper stout. It's like crank grease that's been warmed over. Mm. It's, uh, it's Do very you know about barely. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I cut off ChatGPT. Go ahead. Do you know about WFU for the IC705? Wide FM? It, it does wide FM, if that's what you mean. You can always text too. I I read the chat and Discord, and YouTube. I think it's asking about uh, the other ability to uh, connect to it and remote op. It's the the free version. WF view WF view Whiskey Fox view. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Oh man, WFU is great if you don't want to buy the ICOM software. Oh, um, so so I'll add that to my list of two things to get out of my office. If when I take a, a potty break, I'll grab the SD card reader and I'll grab my laptop because I have SDR control on there, and I wonder if we can make it. Oh no, but I don't have. No, I've got a I've got an Ethernet, I've got an Ethernet cable. I can plug it into this thing. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll test that too. Um, it's very likely that if it works with RSB, RSB1A that you will be able to use any other of the applications to work with it because it's largely going to use the same network connectivity. That's that's Josh, not ICOM or anybody. Like, they're not going to answer that question anyway. But, like, that's me saying it'll, it'll likely work. It, it'll likely work. Man, it's a slow week in the after chat. I, I pissed everybody off with last week's live stream, I think. <laughs> that didn't happen. Oh, oh, no, we had a great after chat without you. Mm. Okay, good. I'm glad because I, uh, I was very upset. And so uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys. So I'll answer that really. Uh, by the way, Brian, I'll come back and answer your question on P25. So I ended up calling T-Mobile and I said, what's the deal? I bought your hotspot. And where I'm at, it's it's saying that it's got 5G's. I've got internet connection. I did a speed test. I was getting uh, about 10 megabit upload, which I only really need 5 megabit upload at 720p on a portable situation to be able to live stream. And I was like, what's the deal? And I should have called them. I should have called them. When things started going bad, I should have just picked up the phone and just called them, but I didn't. And I, I'm kicking myself because the, the live stream would have worked out fine. So they were like, oh, yeah, the account was made, but it, like, wasn't connected to your service plan. And when it doesn't do that, it defaults to, like, very low data or very low connection to, like, open websites and open URLs and all that stuff. And I said, okay, can you sort all that out? And they said, yeah, sure. And it took, like, five minutes, and they reset my account, and they're like, check the device, turn the device off, turn the device on, reset it. And then I just took my laptop out in the backyard, connected the little hotspot, and I was live streaming, like, immediately on, an, on a private live stream that I did on YouTube. So it was literally a T-Mobile F up, and I was pissed. I was so mad. 
I'm like, guys, you don't understand. You don't understand. There's ham radio people that I was trying to talk to, man. But no, we should be good for the uh, the camp out. That live stream was really a shakeout for the camp out that we're gonna do at the end of the month here. So uh, yeah, so that was uh, a catastrophic fail. But I got a crap load of emails that now have some really good questions on what would you do to like put an antenna on my roof or whatnot. So look forward to that next week. That's going to be a huge live stream. Which is good. Well, the expectations were fairly low for the Easter weekend. So I think you picked a good weekend to <laughs> test T-Mobile out. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, and I, I think a lot of people know, I'm not very religious, but I did go to my mom's house for Easter. My mom's very big into Easter weekend. She, um, so we, we, we drove up to my mom's place in Solvang, uh, which is a bummer that I couldn't show any videos from it. I might drop up some pictures or something like that, but because I had I had the antenna like across the yard, it was really cool. But so we pull up into their house, and she's like, "Here, kids, let's do a scavenger hunt." And so she had this like little quiz and answer questions to to get my boys to run around the the yard at, at her house and you know find different stuff and then the next day she had an easter egg hunt and so i grew up with an easter egg hunt where it was like you were hunting for hard boiled eggs my kids they hid like 50 plastic eggs full of candy and like dollar bills in the front yard i'm like oh my god are you kidding me i never grew up with this kind of this is insanity what i'm looking at right now but you know, for them they had a fantastic time yeah so. you can uh thank pinterest for that Mm hmm. Very likely. All right. Anybody else in there that is uh, new to the Ham Radio Crash Course would like to say hi or ask a question? Come now. I'm guessing it's spring break, too. There's a lot of people that are out doing the spring break things. So, all right, let's open it up. And I, I don't see any YouTubers in the house, so we can just skip all of that and just go into open questions on anything. Let's talk about whatever you want, whether it's the 905 or anything like that. I'm uh, I'm happy to help, and we got a lot of other smart people in the room. So let's go for it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's one thing for you to be gone last week, but we're missing Mike and Adam and Don and like the whole group tonight. Oh, yeah, everybody's out. I'm guessing it's spring break, or I don't know. I hope everybody's okay. It's Saturday, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think Don's gone to meet um, the guys at that ham fest. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Jason and and Tank and that. Oh yeah, because they had a there's a ham fest this weekend, right? Oh, okay, Brian. All right, all right. Brian Edwards asks in chat on the YouTube's P twenty five. What is it? P twenty five is a digital voice mode that is often most used by first responders. So police, uh, firefighters, that kind of thing uses P25. But we hams can also use P25. If you end up with a Motorola radio, there's a good chance it is P25 capable. They also do DMR. Uh, there are a couple of repeaters in our area, my area, that do P25. It's a good mode. It's just another digital voice mode. I would... I don't know where I would put it on the... Well, we can ask the chat. Who wants to comment? Like, do you do P25 or have done P25? And how would you rank the audio quality among the vi digital voice modes? Oh, there we go. I have done P25, Frank, KG6, and all that. Yeah, I have tons of Motorola gear. And quite honestly, it's a lot cleaner sounding than DMR is. Yeah, I, I, uh, P25 is very clear. Uh, interesting. Char Hamill, I tried to say hi in the live stream chat, but it won't let me, says, it won't let me, says Dawn. Dawn N5SKT? You shouldn't be blocked anywhere. No, he says it doesn't have permissions. To say hi? That's weird. Huh. Uh, Brett Glass asks, are you working satellites? I haven't in a while, and uh, that's going to change really soon because I have a really, really nice portable uh, azimuth and elevation gimbal that I have to build, and that's next on my list of things to do. 
and that is gonna be killer because I got a I got an 818 and I got a 705 so I can split the audio and I can split the antennas and I'm gonna kick some butt it's gonna be awesome yeah so uh Taylor good good correction there phase 2 p25 is is really good it, it is actually a really good digital mode so yeah if you're into that go for it um you generally need like Motorola radios to play in that space though which is nothing wrong with that but there's a there's a whole set of baggage there's matched luggage that goes into getting into uh uh I dark star I can can I cannot confirm or deny that I have already shot footage of a FTM 500 that's all I'll say If they don't want to go with uh, Motorola for P25, Kenwood has some newer radios. Uh, Kenwood Commercial has some newer radios, and there's always Lone Wolf Harris, well, L3 Harris, that does P25 as well. Dude, get yourself an L3 Harris radio. Heck yeah. Where are you getting those radios? Yeah, you can also of? do Bendix King as well. Oh, no one likes Bendex King anymore. Uh, I have an L3 dealer in uh, Nevada that I go to. Oh, but you're buying from a dealer. Like, you're paying... Are you buying them, like, refurbished or used, or what are you doing? Uh, used. They're uh, no longer uh, no longer in circulation. And uh, the ham that I buy them from, well, he's a dealer and he's a ham, so I get a little ham discount. Interesting. Would you mind DMing me that individual's contact info? I would have to ask him. He tries to stay very low key about yeah. stuff. No, no, for sure. Ask him. Yeah, straight up. Like, let him know that I'm asking. And I, All right, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I won't say anything. I, I won't. Whatever his uh, rules of operation are, I just want to chat with him. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll send him a message in a little bit here. Hey, Luke from Down Under. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. I, uh, one day, one day either by hook or crook, I'm getting to Australia. If it's by crook, I'm probably going somewhere that I don't want to be, <laughs> but right on. Do, uh, do want to get there though. I have had, uh, okay. I, I know we haven't got a lot of radio comments. Well, we've got some, you know, a lot. It's a decent amount, but I'm going to go on a little tangent here. Like I'm on the podcast right now. Um, I have had no better time in my life with my going out with my wife when we were younger and we didn't have kids and we would go to like a bar or whatever, or like, a, you know, a club. And then, you know, we'd, we'd hang out in a bar after, you know, just whatever, being young, whatever. And we'd bump into Australians like on holiday and we would like just hang out with them for the rest of the night. It was always the best time best time the best energy the coolest people they didn't get offended by anything they were just just tops and and they're, they're <laughs> they were drinking like bud light and stuff it was crazy they're just like yeah we're just gonna drink all this we're just gonna drink a crazy amount of beer and it was, it was always so much fun i absolutely loved hanging out with people from uh from australia absolutely a lot of them are like forklift drivers and crane operators and just you know workers that came you know to the states particularly california it was it was always a lot of fun all right right all on. right right oh. yeah pretty much the same experience uh yeah you know canada australia we share the monarchy and i would say half of my you know friends growing up spent a summer down there student exchanges that sort of thing it's just an awesome culture they get along so well with them oh yeah and the car culture and i we've talked about this like for many years the car culture in australia is awesome that utes never died put a big ass engine in a ute with no weight on the rear wheels you got a freaking burnout machine awesome <laughs> totally support the utes man i'm totally on board and the el camino should have never went away <laughs> right on so uh yeah let's go back to ham radio so anybody else, open open board, open forum, any questions on ham radio? We got some in the chat that I'll get to, but anybody in the Discord, you got first crack. Go for it. Just saying hi from New York City. First time over the um, discourse. So we got manual SDR. Thank you for saying hi, bud. Appreciate it. Uh, any questions or anything?
I don't hear you. You you PTT'd for a second and then it it dropped. All right, well, if you figure it out, feel free to come back. Anybody else in there would like to say hi or ask a question? Any question. Ham radio related. Let's go for it. Oh. Okay, I'm back. You're back. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the 905. I'm thinking of waiting a year. Well, most units, when they first come out, they used to have a couple of glitches on them. And then about 12 months, they get rid of a lot of the problems with the new uh, models. Mm -hmm. Um, A year... Mm. Okay, so I, you know, again, I, Ham Nation is sponsored by Icom. I have a good relationship with Ray. I think he's a great guy. So, you know, paint this the uh, with the objectivity you think that I deserve. A year's probably fine. There's there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, keep an eye at the updates that they're doing with the firmwares because you know, hopefully, hopefully people get into this and they you know start to see the value of it, assuming they're in the right location to capitalize on it. And if they start doing some big firmware updates, like you, you might want to jump on. But you know that's going to depend on you know the market realities of it. I, I don't think that ICOM is like going into this radio with blinders on or anything. Like this is going to be the biggest hit. It's going to take the amateur radio stage by storm. I think they're very objective in what they're doing. They're literally deciding to put their you know put a market presence in a space that no other company has done. And to provide like a very wide banded capable radio for a cost, you know, it, it is pricey. I don't think anybody questions that, but it has everything you need pretty much right there to get active on those bands. And nobody has done that. Nobody has tried that. That That is only the space of like boutique ham radio at this point. And the fact I, that ICOM is jumping into that, I, I, applied, I applaud them for that. I think it's awesome. Josh, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. And I'm actually going to piggyback off uh, KD9WVG that posted the same question. We did a POTA activation with our club today. Oh, nice. And it, me and the club, they were running a 7300. I was running the Zygu G90, and we were both blowing out each other's front end. Is there any way to prevent that or yeah. minimize it? Bandpass filters, uh, you, you can't operate on the same band generally if you're that close. So were you on different bands? Well, 20 meters was hot today, so I was running FT8 on 20, and I was only running like 10 watts, and I even dropped it down to 5. They were doing uh, single sideband on 20 watts voice. Right. Yeah, so... And so I switched, mm -hmm. um, and that helped them, but then I could hear their transmission on every single band no matter where I went yeah. anyway. Yeah, so even if you change frequencies, you're you're still going to get that echo effect basically is what you the ghosting, if you will. Because it it's a it's a strong adjacent signal. Like you've heard all the ads, the ham radio companies like we we reject strong adjacent signals. So that's that's kind of what they're talking about. Like if you think about field day and all that stuff, like that's where this stuff, you know, becomes more uh, applicable. So if, if you want the best way to avoid that is you, you put a bandpass filter on. And a bandpass filter is like bookends for every other frequency space other than the band you're on. So what band? 20 meters. Let's take that, for example. It's a little box that basically filters everything up of 20 meters and below 20 meters. It's called a bandpass filter. And you put that in line of your radio, and it should help suppress that local noise from people that are transmitting on adjacent bands that's the idea anyway so then one of those would be needed for every single radio yeah yeah so if, if uh for instance for instance so if you had a uh a buddy hex right from buddy pole the buddy hex from buddy pole is a multi-band hex beam antenna on HF. It goes from 10 all the way up to 20 meters, all those bands in between. Well, you could take that one coax and you could put it into a box called like a pentaplexer or, or triplexer, duplexer, whatever. And you could spit out different bands, right? So you could spin out a, a 20 and then a 15 and a 12 and a 10. And then those all have discrete coax connections. Well, on those discrete coax connections, you 
better believe that you need to have a bandpass filter to reject all the other frequencies that are you know adjacent again because they're local to you transmitting on those frequencies Does that make sense yeah especially coming from the audio world yeah yeah bandpass make a lot of sense but right all right, right yeah it, it's like you're it, it's like right. you're just you're narrowing the it, you're making a soda straw for that rf and you you only allow those frequencies to pass through which is i mean pretty cool that we can do that but that's what you generally need to be able to make that happen and they mentioned that you see that more on sdr style radios is that the reasoning why do they have bandpass filters like if you're in? just talking about the echo the 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 like the dual band echo, like he's on 40, I'm on 20, and I hear him more. Um, maybe. I mean, but uh, but I, again, if you, if you go back to like, if you think about ham radio, like as as just a a thing, we we're trying, <laughs> we as consumers are trying to have the most sensitive receivers possible, right? You you don't want to walk out there and be like, well, it's it's a radio, it transmits pretty good. Uh, but it's it's deaf as a doornail on receive. You would you would want that, right? So you you want the the radio that has like as a precision instrument a very high receive capability. Well, if you have that high receive capability, that means that it's 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 likely also going to pick up other stuff, right? Unless you do stuff to help out the radio to to restrict that. If you think about it right it's like a microscope if you keep going in deeper and deeper like you get to a point where you're amplifying things so much that you start to pull in light and all kinds of other stuff right that that could potentially be a problem yeah makes sense yeah i got a question on that yeah go for it what uh what bandpass filters do you suggest this is a fantastic question because uh, getting access to bandpass filters has been a problem for a little while. Also, pentaplexers, yeah. all that stuff, like uh, I don't have a good uh, recommendation on this. So when I got the Buddy Hex and now getting ready for this camp out, I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be great if I could like, you know, have a bunch of uh, coax lines that I could have just people set up tables and then we could all just operate like adjacent to each other, which is still a goal of mine. If somebody has a pentaplexer or something like that, that you'd let me borrow, I would love that. I would, you know, I'd borrow it from you and send it back to you. But, um, th there, there are not a lot of available options right now on bandpass filters. Uh, I think most of them are sold out. Whatever it is on those components that they build them out of, like I have had a really difficult time to find them. So I don't have a recommendation. Speak to Jason 2.0. He has a Pentaplex report. I know. Used. I know. I should. Um, I should be like, Jason, it, if you're not it, using it, send it over here. You can also make them out of lengths of coax, which is a quarter wave with a short on the end. Oh, if, you just run it, if you just run a T mm -hmm. and then have the the bottom half of the T, the quarter wave. A stub filter. Yeah, it's not the best. It's not as good as a proper filter, which is basically coils and capacitors. Mm -hmm. But it's the fact that you have to, they're, they're not difficult to make. It's the, ha the fact that you have to be so precise when you make them. And you also need quite a lot of equipment. Well, you can do it with a nano VNA. It will check them. Okay. But, um, okay. So yeah, you, it is just capacitors and coils, and a nano VNA is all is reasonably good, fast enough to check a, a filter. So you might get away with it. Hmm. Okay. I've been disappointed in in this. I've been looking, and you would think, you know, as hams, there would be schematics or people building them everywhere and there's not just a lot of information on them oh uh, uh, filters you can they're not hard to build it's in it's in the own it's in the uh our, the uh, arl handbook yeah and the aerial handbook as well mm -hmm. well everything's in there but i mean just you know there's you do a youtube search or where's where's josh's video on building it oh yeah straight up like so dxe yeah. 
uh, so somebody mentions DX uh, DX engineering. They they sell bandpass filters. They do, but like a lot of them sell out really fast. Like they, there's not a big stock of them right now. And so, yeah, yeah, things I've got that eight maybe right now. That's it. I may I may have to look at I may have to look into building a like some kind of pentaplexer type thing. I may have no, to. No disrespect, but this is one of the bits of ham radio where you make it yourself. That's true. Good point. Good point. Because it's not something you need every day, but it when you need it, you need it, like you say. So, but it is, it's like one of them specialist type things, you know, like a like ATV is. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I basically took my twelve contacts today to get my activation, and then bailed out and let them run the rest of the day because there was just no way we were both going to work. Um. Yeah. That that can happen. We, we run into the same problem. More irrefer- irreputable with the fact that it was VHF, UHF, and SHF. Mm-hmm. The SHF 23 SEMS was wiping out two meters and 70 SEMS and 70 megs. Mm-hmm. And it was because the IFs are all the same. It was all 10.7 IF. So as soon as he fired up his 23 SEMS transmitter, that wiped out the IF of the other three radios. Neil went as deaf as a post. Right. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Because they were all in the same place. In fact, most of the arrows were on the same mast. So, uh, oops. So I think we determined that the uh, the USB or the SD card is just audio for the 905. What was the other thing that I was going to go to my office for? I was going to pick something else up. And I forget now. <laughs> I totally forgot. Somebody correct me in the chat. Yeah, I think you were going to go pick up a laptop with WF View, see if you can connect it. Uh, oh, no, an iPad, an iPad. Okay, I'm going to go run to the restroom really fast, and I will be back with an iPad to see if we can do SDR control on the 905. Uh, yeah, no, I can plug it in. That's right. See, those are all the things I worked out already. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Enjoy the memes. Hopefully the Atom one rolls up. I will be right back. Hang out. I do wonder if that thing's any good on two meters. I'll give him five bucks to see if a USB C will fit in the 705. <laughs> it does. Speaking about two meters, um, so I just got myself a, a decent mobile setup going on now, and um, I kind of just keep it on the two meter calling frequency while I'm driving, and then I don't know. I for like long as far, as far as like long road trips go and uh, this is more of i guess a united states thing um but if if i'm driving like cross country and like i have my radio what like what are some things that i don't know i guess like some input from some truckers or something would be good but what, what are some things that people listen to or what do, what do you do besides like i don't know beacon aprs or um, just listen, monitor the two meter calling frequency. Repeaters. Yeah, I mean, I guess I. I, had... I... Go ahead. I, uh, I take uh, radio with me. I travel three to five hundred miles every other day, and I listen to my local. I'm in California too. Uh, I listen to CHP. I listen to local uh, uh, fire channels specifically, especially uh, CDF along the way. Uh, I, I throw everything in there, and then I throw out APRS, and I call out on uh, 652 every five minutes just to see if I pick anybody up. And all the time I've done that, I've picked up maybe 100 contacts. Okay, yeah. Um, I just okay. drove from... Uh, Georgia to Wisconsin, so I uh, kind of I I didn't really I guess call too much, but like when like as far as when I was driving through bigger cities, I always kind of um, scanned for repeaters and stuff, and I didn't really hear a whole lot going on. There was maybe like one decent conversation I had during the whole time. The calling fre- frequency is a good one, but if you're not calling, you know nobody else is either. Uh, everybody's usually got that in their scan bank, but the local repeaters, 
and it it's hard to find but every little area will have its own simplex they talk on and it's not going to be published anywhere and i agree with i agree with the whole uh you know if you don't call no one else is going to call back type thing you know everybody's listening but nobody's talking that's the problem right so I will say that uh, I'm lucky in the sense that we have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, two meter simplex contacts, or you know, just people out on two meter sim, uh, sims. So I, I always just have that frequency loaded on all of my uh, radios, and so one of the bands is almost uh, one of the channels is always devoted to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like so, like my local area here, I talk on the repeater to, you know, I, I know all the people, so it's like a little different because mm -hmm. they hear my call sign and they know who I am. Um, right. But like, you know, just traveling, it's, I feel like it's uh, slightly, for my first long distance travel with a mobile setup, I didn't really make a lot of contacts, I guess. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, I'm not giving you any, uh, for everybody watching, I'm not giving away a password or anything like that. Because <laughs> if they're watching me, they're already seeing me, uh, drop a password in here okay so trying to get network yeah. active here on the uh the the 905 oh it should be called 905 jeez but yeah hey, I, I i would say when you're like going through any kind of state or anything like that make sure you you do you know call cq i think that's a value-added thing and if you do it on the you know appropriate wilderness protocol hours that's like the right time to do that kind of stuff right from my point of view yeah, part part of it might have been like the time timing. I mean, it was during the daytime during the week, so like probably not the the greatest time. Mm -hmm. I did try some uh, some skyline chili. I was down in, I was down in uh, Cincinnati. Okay. Um, that was uh, you know it was it was chili. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was pretty good, and it was really really good service too. Like the guy. Um, that was there. He, I don't know. I had some conversation with him, and he's like, "Oh yeah." He knew I was just passing through, and he hooked me up with some free skyline the next time I come in. What'd you? How'd you have it? <clears throat> I had the um, what was it, a regular five way or something? Oh, so it was uh, it was spaghetti with skyline on it. Yep. Yeah. Right on. All right. So we're uh. We're trying to log in here. So the username, which you might have saw. Come on. Why? Why do you make me do this? You want me to type this in? Josh, I'll give you a dollar so if that USB C will fit in the seven oh five. Give give me a dollar what? If you'll take that 905 apart and see if the USB-C will fit in the 705. <laughs> That's funny. I will... Uh... <laughs> that will not work out for me, sir. <laughs> it was worth a shot. It doesn't look like it's happy. So did I screw something up? Did Ray put some special tamper-proof stickers over the screws on that thing? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm assuming it's it's just merely a hey. If you do this, you're <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> oh Please my don't. god! Look at look at my uh, look at my WSJTX. Oh my goodness! What is going on? I guess the bands are open. The leading question, Josh, is: Are you gonna buy one? Um, I am, I'm leaning towards yes right now because this is a significant investment. But if I can, if I can sort out how to do amateur television really easily from my home QTH, then I, I think I, I probably will. It's really a question of antennas and what I need to be able to like, you know, be effective with that. I'll throw in a dollar if you live stream his face when you give the radio back to him after you take it apart. Yeah, no, we're not we're not doing that. 
what you should do is find someone who's had an accident with a 705, you know, it's all crunched, uh-huh. and then show him the, the back case or, like, from the side so it looks similar. Oh, Ray, look what's happened. Oh, oh dear. Oh, my God. Just screen print the 905. Uh, yeah. This, go back. This, uh, like, you know, do, a bit do, of do clever a, messing, do a, you know. Do a, do a catch me if you the can on hand, the 905, you know. and it's just the 705, and I and I put a heat, I slap a heat sink on the back of it. Oh, my God, Ray, you won't believe what happened. I got rear-ended. Uh, so uh, SDR control is not seeming to... We're so cruel. ...to be able to resolve the connection to the uh, 905 right now. I'm going to let it sit. I'll let it do its thing. But uh, that is a, a no bueno at this point. Uh, Speaking of putting too. a dollar in, when are you going to start taking donations to put a CubeSat up? Oh, is that a thing we can do? Do I know the right people in space to make that happen? I don't know. Your best friend, Elon. Shut up. Shut your mouth. I'm not going to talk to that guy. You might want to talk to Michelle Thompson down in San Ant- down in San Diego. She's got contacts with regards to putting birds up. Um, I'm actually supposed to go out there. When am I supposed to go out to a balloon launch? Is it tomorrow? No. It was some kind of launch today, some kind of high altitude, big one. But no, I think I don't think you would. I think you could get raise the cash pretty quick. Next Sunday, I mean, I'm about on it. Next Sunday, I go to a balloon launch. There's a school in San Diego that uh, that I kind of got in contact with that they do they do balloon launches. So we're gonna I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna shoot the whole thing for them. But yes, meme sat now. Wild Cascadia Radio, you got me excited on this. How do we do? How do we do? It only accepts SSTV. That's the only thing it accepts. It only will accept SSTV up and down. <laughs> NASA does uh, open source satellite projects a lot, like six a year. But I don't know that you're going to get them to go for that one. Yeah, Hear me Ilana's, out. Yeah, Ilana sat really. <laughs> Meme Sat's gonna be a hard push for uh for the uh for the Ilana Sat. Oh, Edward said it first. Okay, Edward, you get the credit though, and you get the internets for that. And what this radio really needs is a geostationary satellite like that QO one hundred. Take advantage of the two point four and ten gig bands. We, this this radio's we, made made for that. We do we do really need a uh, a geosynchronous uh amateur sat. We do really need that. That would be fantastic if we could get that. Oh, it would be useless. Don't you have because it would be slammed Josh constantly. Wink, wink. Oh yeah, it would just you would never be able to get yeah. in because there would be like ten guys pushing ten thousand watts straight to it, burning yeah. it up, the, and well, they're using it, it for packing. It, yeah, if you do it like what they have for QO one hundred, they've got half a meg, half a meg up and half a meg down. So there's plenty of space. Are they? Is it a linear? Is it a linear? Yep. Yeah, it's linear. I, we would need we would need a linear for uh, geo for sure. Yeah, definitely. See, that's funny right there. That's would it get down? Yeah, it, I mean, if it's a satellite, it would get down by definition. I mean, is that thing any better than the seven hundred five for two meters uh, and seventy cents as well, Josh? It's the same. That's ten watts. Oh, I don't mean the power output. I mean the receiver and how you know how that stuff works. Because oh, good question. So I I never I never took the seven hundred five for a receiver stability test kind of thing like I did with the nine hundred five. But we we put the nine hundred five through the paces and um, it's so it's kind of interesting. And I don't want to. I'm I'm going to give some spoilers for everybody watching right now. So the receiver stability on specifically the uh super high frequencies so anything with a discrete antenna connection so the 2.4 5 6 10 gigahertz the frequency stability and receiver stability or receiver you know reception capability very good um on anything that was the type n connection was a little bit less not that it was under spec it was just we checked it under that of the super high frequency so this is a radio that was designed really for the upper frequencies. It's still going to perform fine on everything that it, it works on, but 
this is like what this is what they're trying to do. Like they really are aiming for microwave. And it seems to be very effective. The the uh amateur TV guys were like, I'm I'm shocked that it's like this solid on, you know, ATV for all the stuff, you know, all of our frequency spaces, all the power we put out, and their claim of what the, their power is. They were like rock solid. They're like, this is it's it's a really good antenna or a radio. It it, it does exactly what it claims. Because because back in the day, um, I used to be involved with amateur TV. Um, oh yeah. The only way we could get PAs was to rob them out of mobile, blown up mobile phones. And oh, that's funny. Sort of stretch them because they were all nine hundred megs back then. Right. And we used to sort of stretch them up to twenty three up to uh, twenty three sems in order to make them work. If you know what I mean. That's cool, man. So I love that know, ingenuity. You know, well, I, I, I wasn't too much of the. I used to be more like get up the town. I can connect this area up. <laughs> right. Well, that wasn't the brains of the trust, if you saw it. I mean, but. We used to run. I used to help the guys. They used to run a repeater in my city, and uh, it was pretty good. It had all DTMF control and teletext and all sorts of stuff. That that was on twenty three sims. I I think it's um. I mean, oh, but there oh. used to be uh. The used to have these. Uh, we used to know the local television um, antenna maker, and we had them made a, make us up a load of elements for twenty three sems, and we take the standard UHF TV antenna, and then remake them into a uh, twenty three sems uh, uh, beams. Oh, that's weird. The RF unit like timed out. It's back. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Try WFView with 905. Wait, the new WSJTX has dark mode? Seriously? Oh, uh, we're doing Yeah, that. dude. I, uh, how oh, many people have not seen this yet? Get out of here with that. Get that out of here white light mode trash. That's yeah, really uh, 2.6.1. Dash Win64 improved is the name of it when you go to SourceForge. I need Elite Chad Dark Mode. Uh, well, it's 261, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Oh, see, so this is going to be one of those type of downloads. Oh, 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 okay, all right. Oh, I would love a dark mode to match my my grid tracker here. That's that's what we're all about. Now, when you get in there, there is some configurations that you have to do with your your highlights, like your colors, because it thinks that white text on a yellow highlight is a good oh, idea. Oh, sure, and yeah, yeah, can yeah, read yeah. It. You have to go, and it's easy. You just go in there, right click on each one. You have to individually click on each one of the highlights and change the text to black. But all right, all right, worth well, it. We'll get through this right now. We'll do it right now. Yeah, T.O. did a live stream on it. Was it two weeks ago now? Well, I was... Uh, last week's live stream was a, a dead fish. So I'm two weeks behind on ham radio. Yeah, we wanted to know if, you, if your Ford would work. You know. Oh, it works. Yeah, it works, it works with like, all, like with gangbusters. All, all the powers coming out of it. Yeah, no the the amp was like, yeah, I'm putting out a thousand watts. There we go. It was it was very impressive. And um, so I had a I had a split connection for 240 to the amp with a twist lock connector, which I I had to install that. That's part of the things I was doing uh, before the live stream. And then I had a uh, 110 volt for the the radio. So all of that worked, no problem. I ran like six hours through the day testing this out making contacts with people i made a couple of contacts testing it out chasing some potas it, it worked fine like there was no problem with any of that it was it, it was all this stupid t-mobile thing all right so i'm where's this dark mode how does one enable so go up your view up top 
And then it's the drop down. It's at the very bottom. It says use dark mode or dark style or something like that. What? So when you first open, not in any of the deep made, but just at the main, yeah, you go under view. Yeah. Okay. Color highlighting scheme. Oh, you don't. I'm on the your live stream. Yeah, you don't have. It should be under SWL mode. There's another option with a little box that says use dark style. Uh, I don't. Oh, it's in. Oh, Jesus. What have I done? Uh, what? I don't have the dark mode under view. No. no Interesting. Back. Yeah, I was supposed to have a screenshot of it. Um, I had to start mine with a special command line parameter to get it to load into dark mode. What? Well, that's weird. Mine loaded dark mode normally. Yeah. My, I may not have the most recent version. I'm going to have to go watch Steve's video, How to Get Dark Mode Unlocked. Yeah, it, it doesn't have uh, that view option for me. I thought I had 261, too. I, I didn't think I had, like, a... We've got to get the enhanced... Uh, oh, yeah, I got to get... Interface it. mode. That's right, that's right. Hey, while you're doing that, I was just going to let people know I'm posting a link from the ARRL on uh, bandpass filters if anybody wants to build one. There you go. Right on. All right, here's a link from the chat. Oh, oh, so it's like it's kind of dark mode. I want like a gray window title. I don't want like, I mean, I know what you did there. I know what you did. It's like, yeah, you, you, you can. Oh, my God. Is that what it is? Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, I, I think I'll just wait. <laughs> Not to say I can't do it. I just don't want to do it right now. But you already have great title bars, so most likely it will render on your local system with the great title bars. Uh, I'm sure it would work if it had the option for it. But where's the option? We got. Oh options. yeah, uh, <laughs> pesky option. Oh, here we go. We got DX coming in right now. Right on. Okay, so anybody else in there with a uh, hammer deal question or anything, go for it. It's open-ended right now. Otherwise, I'll start. I'll turn it over to single sideband. We'll start doing live contacts. Try WFView with nine o oh, five. I did well. I mean, I, I I tried to do um SDR control and it didn't work. I don't think that the uh, I don't think it's updated for to support it yet because they said that uh, RSB one A has to be updated to support it right now. I don't think that it's it's ready yet. I think we're still on the uh, the cutting edges of what the radio can do. Uh, about question about antennas and power lines. All right, go for it. That's on the tech side on the uh, the YouTube's. Well, Colin, it might very well have a dark mode, but I can't seem to get it. So. We're just going to chillax until it works for me, I guess. Go ahead with your question. What about WFView? It is another software and it is free. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not going to download that right now. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, wait, is that Windows? Maybe we will download it. Hold on. I, I guess the... I guess the the point is that it will likely work, assuming that they update their software to make it work. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. 
Here we go. What the hell? I'll download it. All right. Oh, Kisos have dropped off. 20 meters is dying. Uh, restream bot. So if you have to ask a question, just say question and then ask the whole question. Don't just uh, like say, I have a question and then give me the title. Just give me the whole thing with question in there because it doesn't highlight otherwise. And I have a hard time trying to track it down. Uh, Josh? Yeah. Is the um, 905, uh, what frequency does, does it start using an IF? Because on the uh, 705, it's anything above uh, 25 megs, isn't it? So how, what, you know, is the, is the 2 meters and 70 cents direct conversion, and then after that it goes to an IF? Or I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I think that's a Ray question, isn't it, really? Well, I mean, it, it might be in the manual. You can, you can look it up online. Yeah, so maybe. it's in the manual. It's um, 144 and 430 is RF direct sampling. Uh, 1224 and 56 are direct conversion IF with 1.2 using a first IF at 331 to 337 megahertz. 2.4 and 5.6 using a first IF at 914. Second IF at 346. Interesting. Might have trouble with that over here. Nine fourteen still a terrestrial TV frequency. All right, we're installing WFU. Thank you for your answer. Quite welcome. All right. Uh oh, what just happened? I lost the installer. I was thinking of trying to talk my club into buying a 905, but I don't know if they're really that interested in UHF. So I was thinking, well, if it was a really good two-meter radio, I might be able to talk him into it. All right, let's try this again. What the hell? Can I drag this up? Oh, it doesn't let me drag it into the other window. That's really weird. The installer is not good. <laughs> well, that's a little that's sus. That's interesting. If one of the IFs is at 914, I wonder if this radio could be modded a bit to uh, go on 33 centimeters. That band might be open just through the IF. All right, so we have installed WFU. Okay. Hey, all right, all right. So, could not open the COM port. Oh, because it's not connected. Oh my God, I'm on the wrong computer. Jeebus. Yeah, get out of here. I have to do it over here. Ah, I wasn't even thinking. I need the... I need the new, the crap top. Please hold. All right, anybody else with ham radio questions, come in now. This is the best time to ask them because I'm screwing around with technology. Question. Yeah, go for it. Okay. You've got a brand new scout, age 14, just got their technician. You want to send them out into the wild. What radio would you give them? Uh, could you give me their age range? Age is 14 and no budget. Are they familiar with radio technologies? Have they used them before or are they brand new to all of this? Brand new to all of this and just got as technician, let's say a month ago. Um... And, and are they going to go backpacking, that kind of thing? They're going to kind of be rough on the equipment, from my guess? Extremely rough. Um, yeah. We're in the Northeast, extremely rough, and backpacker. Ultra light. Uh, okay, so 
I, I would say that you should probably go with the VX6, the Yaesu VX6, and program it beforehand and have a like a card, like a laminated card that can go with the radio that talks about, you know, what repeaters are, you know, that they could potentially reach from where they're going. The VX6 is probably the right one because it is water resistant. It is very, very rugged and um, fairly easy to use, like from the point of view of like channelized system. They need to understand what the, the VFO versus memory channel button does so that they can click on it and switch between VF and memory and uh, be able to work with the pre-programmed channels. I, I think that there's no avoiding that if you, if you want to look at ham radio. Does that help? Thank you very much. Good question, though. All right, we're getting VFU on the crap top. Hold tight. All right, anybody else in there with questions, ham radio or otherwise? Let's hear them. Uh, Brick Glass in the YouTube chat ask if you'd be casting from Hamvention. Not sure if you missed that question or didn't want to take it. Uh, no, yeah, I, I'll be I'll be live streaming from Hamvention for sure. I'll, I'll be doing the uh, the phone live stream like I've done in the past for sure, for sure. I'm I'm trying to think of how I can improve the quality of the live streams, but at the same time, like most ham fests, I swear, most ham fests I go to, the quality of the network is garbage. So we're lucky that we can do the the quality of the the transmitting we do at this point. It's it's not great. It's it's been a challenge. Uh ham hamcation in particular is a very challenging ham fest to live stream from. Hey Josh, so I was digging into the vendors uh, options there, and mm -hmm. they do offer to sell Wi-Fi and and wired as well to the vendors. It doesn't appear to be out to the general public, but maybe you can uh, look into that. Uh, I may have or may not have already done that. Yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. It should be fun. I'm gonna. I'm I'm very excited for this ham fest. There is something we're doing, which I don't know that has ever been done before, and I can't talk about it yet. And in fact, you won't know about it until you know about it. Likely the day of, and you have to be there. But I'm very excited about it. Uh, I'm not bringing. I don't bring any merch because there's no cost savings to me having it because it's print on demand. Everything we do is print on demand. So there's no, it's already as cheap as we can make it just direct from printer. So if you, if you buy something there, I'll have stickers. Of course I'll have stickers. Uh, those, that's the only way to get, uh, aside from being a patron is some of the only ways to get a sticker. I don't give them out to anybody, but I do, I do have them and QSL cards and you know, all that fun, other fun stuff. But yeah, just... let, let me just say we're, we're doing something real wild real wild this year come on how do you how do you talk to unicorns oh the unicorns nothing in comparison to what we're attempting to do this year uh we, there will well i can never i can never confirm or deny that there won't be some kind of crazy spectacle um because we are doing airbnb again so no one knows what will end up happening. If we do that, we'll make uh, Mike Kate MRD live stream it. <laughs> yeah, that that channel will live on. Uh, it's a shame that you had to hide that video. <laughs> oh, that was too bad. And and I, I, I don't think I was hiding it because of me. I, I think that I was somewhat one of the better offs of that live stream. <laughs> Was, no, you was, you did a community service there by taking yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah, I I think that it was uh, not good for anybody if that was left online. But uh, I I think that some of the things that are planned 
this uh this ham fest are new and interesting no one has attempted them or maybe other people have attempted them and if they have i apologize for not knowing about it but uh we're attempting to do something that has not been done and it's a it's a very tiny amount of people that know about it right now so it's yeah, awesome hey, well, are, we'll are you gonna live stream live. via the 905 to like another 905 and then like have just that mesh. connected to the internet yeah just in, like, mesh. the hotel room yeah, yeah yeah just mesh the entire uh amateur television system yeah uh no no but we used just to mash that. your data into the building. I, th that's the problem is that most of the time, uh, most of where we go, the internet speeds are bad. Like they're they're just not very good. It. Uh, there, that's what I'm saying. Put a like, hot spot on on your truck and then mesh your little those little mesh deals that you've got <laughs> into the building throughout the buildings. So. Here's the here's the deal with that. Even even with the hotspots, right? So I I've played around with a ton of hotspots. I've worked with different carriers, AT and T, T Mobile, Verizon, and there are some areas of our country that are just not good for cell cell phone reception. Period. And you can't like buy a better hotspot to improve upon it. It's just is not great. Like it, it's just, it's just not great. So, uh, I, I work with what I can. <laughs> Hamvention is not bad though. I have to say Hamvention is one of the better ones. I, I, uh, I have little less problems in Hamvention. But it's I wish I had one. What's that? Oh, I just, I, I wish I was going to go. I, I drove right next to Dayton. Oh, I wish I could come here in like another month or whatever it is. It's going to be a big one. I have a feeling that this is going to be one of the bigger ham fests since uh, COVID. I think this is going to be the one of the largest ones they've had. I'm I. It's kind of weird. Like it's a. Uh, you can almost feel like it's like the wind. Like oh Annie, the sandstorms are coming. I feel it in my bones. Like that kind of thing. But like you start to take the pulse of amateur radio. I think that there's like been a big swelling of people that are that are getting onto HF. They're getting more active in amateur radio as like a larger community. And I think we're gonna see a lot of them in Dayton. And I, I'm really excited for it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I meant to ask you, uh, or I sent you a DM. I think I don't remember. Did you see that that Wrangler Star guy is going to start putting together a Bofang package pre-programmed? I, I did not say that. Uh, so if if you listen to the podcast, which the pod, so Ham Radio Crash Course has a podcast. Uh, my wife and I record the podcast, and we were talking about Wrangler Star Cody, who's a YouTube uh, creator. We did not talk about Cody to encourage people to go watch Cody. We talked about Cody because, like, he's almost a a warning about uh, a warning towards preparedness. That he's he's kind of taking this weird turn with his content. Uh, Cody used to be for many years like one of the one of the channels I would go to for like hand tools and and stuff like that to like you know, talk about what you should have, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. But he's turned really weird the last couple of months slash years. So I, I don't know that I'm, I'm, I'm not recommending anybody go watch Cody. And yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I just, I thought, well, he's talking about putting together a pre-programmed radio package mm -hmm. with emergency channels. Like your local emergency channels. Yeah. Or both are. Yeah, he's 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 getting a little wild. All right. So uh BF or WFU I've got going here. We're still burning out the contacts here on uh on FT eight. I'm gonna flip it over to uh Colin CQ. All right, let me go back to the overhead. Here we go. Okay. So let's get out of this business. And Don't forget to put your SD card back in your old radio. Oh, that's a good. That's a good point. 
I'll ship it back to Icon with my SD card and be like, can you, can I, can I please have, have my samples back from the OMs yelling at each other on HF? I need that for future musics. All right. Done. Thank you. Appreciate reminding there. Uh... All right. All right, so I'm a little bit new to this program. We now have wireless connection, so let's go to the Janko connection. That's definitely not it. Hold on. Hold on. This should be laptop. Hmm. Hold on. Going Australian on us. One of these is the right input. Ah, we found it. Okay. All right. So this is the Jankopotamus screen. Well, it's the crap top, not the Jankopotamus. So we need to find settings. Connect to radio. Nope. We don't have a settings yet for that. Yep. There's no command port. Settings, I bet it's going to say, uh, we're going to do serial. We're going to, oh, that's not right. Nope, that's not right. All right, we're going to turn off WFU. Yep, bye-bye, bye-bye. And we need a W, run it again, because it didn't. Query the uh, the USB ports. Yes, I know. There they are. There's those beautiful ports. Uh, it's going to be 1920. And go. Maybe? I didn't set audio yet, so it... Oh, you know what? It's going to potentially... Did it do it? No, it didn't do it. Hmm. Okay. All right. Civ address is going to be... Where's connections? There it is. Uh, Civ... It's going to be A4, Alpha 4. And we're going to do 1920. Hmm. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's going to get it. Because we're doing USB connection. Was there two COM ports from that radio? Maybe they uh, alternate the functionality on this radio. That's true. I could change the USB. Go ahead, ChatGPT. I think you have to click save. Oh, okay. I have click save. Here we go. Hmm. I did change the USB connection. It is the right USB audio codec, though. That's the right one. Okay, let me go back to eight, uh, 10 now, and we'll do a save, and we'll cancel connection. Oh! Oh! It says disconnect from radio. That's good news. Here we go. Progress. Here we go. Oh, nope, it's all crashed out. <laughs> uh, found radio at address A4. The name is IC. So, okay, it was happy with that, but it's the... Oh, yeah, it's it's Big Dead. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have a feeling that the the radio might not be ready for... Oh, bye-bye. It, it, it yeeted itself. It done been yeeted. How is this station hears me at a plus 15 but won't close out the... Close it out. Let's go. We good? I've had that question multiple times with different he, stations. He's coming back. I'm a plus 16 to him. And he's like, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. What I think it is is they go through like the first two or three steps and then that's it. They consider that the contact. It drives no, but they me keep nuts. coming back with the signal report. Oh, wait. it Did it do it? Is it? Oh, it's doing it. But it died. It it did it, but it died. I think that it's a uh, so straight up. I think that WFU will be able to do. Yeah, see, that's it right there. That's it. That's the right frequency. That's the frequency it's on right now. But then, if you breathe on it, it's gonna die. There you go. There you go. There was that other option, that checkbox to trust the model ID. I wonder if that would make any difference for you. Well, it seems to be semi-stable right now. It's chilling. So let's uh, let's go to. Oh, nope, nope. It's very unhappy. Okay, so do I think that it will work? Yes, I do. I think we have proof of concept that it can work and likely will work. It's just not working right now. Look at my beautiful pink lattice of communication that I've got going on right now. I should probably check into Winlink right now. Plus seven? We're doing a plus seven right now. That is insane. I'm not even pointed uh, north, and I'm getting plus seven. That's crazy. So again, we're we're uh off the beam. That's off the side of the beam, and I'm getting plus seven, which is yeah, I don't want the beam to be a little bit more discreet than that. I'm trying to shun the Pacific Northwest, if you will, with my signal. I'm kidding. So I actually have two questions I was thinking of, Josh. Oh, I would love to hear them. Go for it. Okay, one's grid tracker related and one's Arden mesh related. Which yes. one do you want first? Uh, let's go with Grid Tracker because I can display that right now. All right. Well, I'm not in front of the screen watching the YouTube, so I'll have to go back and watch it afterwards. Uh, how do you get that big pink uh, greatness there? I've tried a couple different settings. You, you helped me a little bit, and I've tried a couple different settings, and I can't get that whenever I'm uh, playing FT8. Well, uh, that's because my signal is doing that. that. Those are people that hear me, right? Are you just talking about the, the 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 little lines that tell you the people that hear you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Both. I can show you how to do that. That's easy. So if you if you go to little gears here, little gears on Grid Tracker, the green gear and the red gear, and you click on it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you go to thank you very much. You go to map, and you see how the RX spot color is pink. I did that. Like yeah. I, I adjusted I'll, the slider. I'll have to watch it afterwards. <laughs> okay. So uh, the RX spot color, you adjust it to whatever color you want, and then you make sure you check the box that says RX spot color. And once you have that clicked, they should start popping up over time. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right. What's your uh, question on Arden Mesh? Okay. Well, I got it set up. Uh, we're, we're setting it up up here in the San Francisco North Bay. Is there any way to connect in to, say, like, Southern California's Arden Mesh or Texas or New York? I was able to see that there was the New Jersey Super Node, but I can't see anything else besides what's local. Yeah, so uh, you can you can tunnel over IP. So you, you can tunnel over Internet, and that will allow you to make a, a long-distance connection using the Internet. If you want to do it via RF, then that would involve fleshing out your mesh network so that it hits all those other locations okay yeah right now i'm just in tunnel mode the rf side is still being built up 
Oh, so if you're on tunnel mode, if you, if you actually go to uh, Jason, Ham Radio 2.0, he did a live stream talking about our um, Arden with tunnel mode. So he has a tunnel mode setup too. And I believe you can tunnel into his setup and then you can you can use the internet to bridge the connection. I Okay, thank you. I'll have to go check that out. Yeah, yeah, do that. Do that. Th that that's probably the best way that you can increase your, you know, capabilities within Arden. I am I don't want to say I'm a purist because I'll definitely tunnel into some other nodes. But at the same time, I, I really like doing the the RF, you know, increasing my capability as much as possible. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, right yeah. now, we're still building up the RF side of things up here in the San Francisco North Bay. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. That Those are two questions I had. Uh, yeah. So ham, ham without a plan. That's a great point. So there's two settings there. My green dotted lines are people that have actively tried to make a contact with me. That is also in that same map page. Uh, you just need to make sure you check the box for that particular thing. If it's just people that heard your signal, that's the, the pink box with the, with the check that I did. So yeah, that's how that works. Uh, I don't know why. By the way, everybody is trying to make contact with me where I keep calling CQ like an idiot and it's not may it's not landing anything. I don't know why that's happening. I'm going to restart. So by the way, after I did the update to WSJTX, it's doing that. It's not auto sequencing the contacts. It should just go to the next the first person that made the 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 reply to me, but it's not doing that right now and I don't know why. So everybody that told hey, me Josh. I could get dark mode and I haven't gotten dark mode and now WSJTX is not working. I'm very offended. I'm no. kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Um, that was me trying to connect to you and for some reason it just wouldn't kick back. So now that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. We should have gotten that fixed. That was my... Well, that was me not manually operating WSJTX. <laughs> I want my radio to be simple. Make it easy for me. Uh oh, Don's back. Is Don in the uh uh oh my wife's in yeah, the chat too. I'm here. Hey, what's up, man? I uh, just uh Poda and Hampfest all day with Jason and Frank and the Texas boys. Yeah, so what's the live report from the uh, field there? Uh, the ham fest was great. Uh, yeah. All I, did, all I did was I bought connectors. And then um, later on, uh, we took off and went up to a park. And Jason's going to stay there overnight at the park. And uh, it was just him and me and Frank up there at the park. Nice. Um, and I worked about, uh, about 10 contacts because it took – over an hour and a half to get to the park from the ham fest. And so it was pretty late in the day when I got started. And so that, that's why, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just now getting back from all of that. So right on, man. <laughs> long, well, cool. long day, but f a whole hell of a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know, Getting connectors is one of the most important aspects of our hobby, believe it or not. That's why you go to mm -hmm. Hamfest. As you start getting older, after you've connected, correct, uh, collected a lot of radios, the things you need are connectors and power yep. poles and all the little doodads and whatnot that you need for ham radio. But what was the what was the supply like in the uh, in the swaps and whatnot? Was it pretty good? Um, not especially. I mean, we commented on that several times. It was. There was a lot of quote junk out there, and there were. I think I saw a couple of eight ninety sevens, and you know, really that that was it. Other than that, everything was like the old Helicrafters, the, the you know the old old bank. Oh, you're uh, you're, you're you know. getting the the hot the hot old uh, school stuff like the uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah the yeah. boat anchors. Uh, it was a, it's yeah, a boat exactly. anchor show. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, the one that we went to is kind of like that. It's not, it's all swap fest. And there's a couple of vendors that come out there that, you know, sell connectors and uh, cables and stuff. And the only big vendor that was out there was ABR. And the oh, only wow. reason that ABR is out there is because they're in out of Houston. Right. So it's a couple of hours for them to, to drive over there. And 
they had some cables and stuff like that. And then I, I talked to him because, uh, uh, I bought a ro- or I got my rotator in yesterday from R and L. And so I need a cable for it. I did not buy the cable with the rotator, uh, because I need to know how long the rotator needs to be mm-hmm. or how long the cable needs to be. So Connor had talked to me about them and DX engineering for, for the cable and to get one, you know, the length I need. But I talked to him and he said, well, you, you just live around the corner from HRO. Just go over there and get it. Or even you can order it from them. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, whatever. If that, that's what you want me to do, sure. <laughs> you can. That's true. But all in all, yeah. it's a pretty good little get together. Oh, yeah. It was the, even with that. So, like, the, it's hard to describe this place. I, I assume Jason will have some videos on it. And, sure. and obviously, Frank. Yeah. And um, Did I, Mike I don't go? think. Did yeah, Mike, Mike was there. Yeah. yeah, Mike was there. Vern was there. Vern Six, right? He was there. Yeah. Um, those are the guys I think, you know, that y'all are all familiar with. Sure. Um, and there was a bunch of guys that, you know, I know people from my club and then other people I've met, you know, at Jason's various events when we have get togethers. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I, th- there were a lot of people and I went there as much for the people as I did for the connectors. <laughs> but anyway. Sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, but Mike was there. Sure. And he left, uh, about an hour or two before we did. And he just drove home. Um, whereas Jason was going to camp up at the park and the park was halfway between, uh, the ham fest and my house. So I went, I actually left early because Jason was breaking his trailer down and there was all kinds of things going on with that. And, uh, he had when a lot you say, of stuff out. When you say breaking his trailer down, do you mean that the trailer mm. broke down? Because that's no, no. one of the <laughs> continuing journeys in, in Jason's saga with his trailer. Well, yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to tell. Oh, okay, don't yeah, anyway. yeah, don't don't spoil anything. But yeah, there were there were some issues with <laughs> with that too. But I mean he, he got it. He Poor got it guy, to man. Uh, yeah. I, I know Jason can make a lot of things work. Like he can make it happen, but uh he yeah. has had nothing but problems with that trailer. <laughs> And yeah, and, and, and it was. I'm laughing while I say that, but I mean that genuinely. Yeah, there were a couple of people that came up, you know, that know him, of course, from from his channel, and they were going, "Well, so how do you like that trailer?" And he was going, "Uh, yeah, I no, I I don't, I don't really like it. <laughs> I, I don't, don't like it. Yeah, yeah." yeah he's... <laughs> but he said, I, "I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it, or, or you know, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, you know." And and he did go over the problems with them uh, that he's had with it, and he and he continues to have with it. Yeah, he's so, had a lot of problems. Yeah, and uh, in fact, one of the, one of the reasons I when I went out there with him to the park, I wanted to see him set it up, and because um, I I never actually seen somebody set it up, so I mm-hmm. watched him set it up, and then um, you know he went to there were a couple of things that he was going to do. And it took a good long time for that, for him to um, get it working, so to speak. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he got it working, got everything set up. And uh, he and Frank were setting the radio up and they got the radio all set up and everything. And um, the, the radio, the radio part of it worked really well. And Frank was, Frank had his uh, FTDX 10 out and, uh, Jason had set up an infed half wave on his 50 foot mast and, uh, uh, they, they were, they were operating. Now, when, what I, when I left, I just simply sat in the car with the ATOS and made contacts with that. Um, and then, uh, about an hour or so after I got there, you know, Jason called me on one forty six five two, and we're like, Oh, Hey, we're both in the park right now. We can log this. So, <laughs> Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right on. Well, very good, very good. Um, uh, yeah, I'm glad for the live after action report there. Mm-hmm. Sure, no problem. And hopefully, you guys had fun tonight. I'll have to obviously watch it on Team Replay, but I will. Yeah, the 905 is an interesting radio. I I think that it's going to be, you know, it, it it's obviously a niche radio for people that mm-hmm. are into that aspect of it. But but for the people that are into it, uh, after the testing I did yesterday with some proper microwave enthusiasts. Uh, mm-hmm. It's 
it, it's hitting all the marks they claims it they claim it does, and it's everything I've seen's been good. Yeah, and of course I know I need to watch the video, but so how is it on digital? Uh, like, what do you mean? Like, well, I mean, one of the reasons, and again, you know what business I'm in, I'm not going to yeah, bore yeah, you yeah. all with that, but we, the reason we use those frequencies is because of the, uh, the high speed data that we can get across of it. Right. And, you know, I mean, uh, at least two of the bands y'all are using, uh, would give you the same. I mean, if you had the same technologies we did, you could get the same 5G speeds out of it, right? Mm -hmm. But hams are not using it for that, which to me is like, why not? But anyway, I mean, just uh, having the ability to use or to do higher speed data on it would be one of the reasons that I think that uh, you would want to be up at those frequencies rather than what I always hear about microwave is, oh, Hey, I just made a call from this mountain to that mountain using a 10 gigahertz link. Isn't that neat? Well, yeah, that's neat one time, but then do you use it every day? No. <laughs> so, but if you had a data link, a high speed data link, or you were setting up a high speed data link between two repeaters using mm -hmm. it, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. So, I, I, I don't know how to answer your question because there isn't like a button you push for a mode that's just like, data mode right there there's amateur television which we talked about a lot on the live stream but there's a dv mode which is digital voice but there's another mode for dd which is digital data and so right. that's their that's their mode they put it in if you're going to do some kind of high speed data traffic uh we we didn't test a lot of that because the radio doesn't seem like it's completely done on that side uh, which I'll I'll talk about um, on the so I'm posting another video next week that's going to okay. go through the testing. So the the good news is that like you know frequency sta stability or stability on the receive side and then the transmit side is all very good. Like that that is they're hitting all the marks that they claim they would hit. The question that I have is actually that DD mode. I mm -hmm. want to know what that DD mode is for. I'm guessing that it's like. It's like a D star data mode, is my guess. It's kind of like uh, D rats, like the the D rats data mode. But if mm. you can if you can kick it over to a data mode where it can use a you know a decent chunk of bandwidth, then like yeah, that would be right up your uh, your alley. Yeah, D star data, mm. DD. Thank you, Captain Blitz. So uh, if it does the big that, question is, go ahead, go ahead. I was saying, I think the big question is how much bandwidth can it actually push? Yes. Like what can the transmitter actually do in bandwidth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, if it can only do like, you know, maybe a one megahertz bandwidth, then you're not really getting the full advantage of right. uh, the super high frequencies up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's a good question. Let, let's, uh, let's look into that. We can, we can flip it over to mm -hmm. that mode right now. Yeah. And that, uh, I don't know if you've seen that kid that's been releasing the videos. I mean, I know he's, Somebody that, I mean, he, he regularly releases YouTube videos, but he's lately he's been doing TCP IP over the air, right? So, and it's two custom built radios. Well, right. yeah, but all they're doing is they're, they're creating packets and, uh, sending them, um, analog over, over a link and he's doing it at 440 and he's on 440 to, to get any kind of speed at all. Well, yeah, but if you could do that over 5.6K, oh, yeah, that would be huge. Oh, yeah. yeah. However, we are limited by, and it's a it's a stupid limit, but we have a limit on uh, our data modes. Yes, it's the baud rate that. limit. We need yeah, to get yeah. rid of that stupid baud rate yes. limit. Yes. Yeah, if we, if we got rid of that at 10 gigahertz, oh, we could exceed 5G it. speeds. Yes. Yes. Don, thank you so much. See, this is where you and I can come together like Voltron and really get mm -hmm. some stuff done because you and I agree 100% on this. If we get rid of the baud rate limit, that would allow us to utilize our bandwidth to a much greater extent. We would be killing it. We would be faster than service providers if we could do oh, yeah. data rate. Like with our with our parabolic antennas and with the power that even half a watt power, consider what your phone's doing, right? Mm -hmm. If we if we were able to do half a watt on some of these higher bandwidths, we'd be killing it in the data space. Oh, yeah. 
killing it. The, the only thing we don't do and they won't let us do is in the in my in my world, we can compress data and encrypt it in a way that we can, you know, basically do like multi-channel right. uh, things. So we're whereas like on a single frequency, we're putting out 24 to 48 channels, sometimes even more mm-hmm. uh, at the same time, which means we can handle more and more and more phone calls. Plus the fact that it's every everything is packetized, so we're carrying multiple uh, calls over a single channel. Yeah, you're not going to do that in ham radio, but that doesn't matter. We we don't need that for what we need. I think it'd be need. really cool oh, if you this could employ it. a technology like that, and you could do like not just HD amateur TV, but if you could do like time division multiplexed HD amateur TV and full duplex and have mm. simultaneous video and audio going two directions and basically have a video call over the air. Yeah. Well, in TDMA as old technology, we've done, we're way beyond T- TDMA in our business. But again, right. that's just so that we can handle thousands to millions of people. Right. Uh, amateur doesn't need to do that. We, we just need like point to point, maybe a couple of repeaters, things like that to connect cities together. But we don't need to be like competing with the phone companies. Uh, the, if we ever got into that mode, then, uh, you know, the guys with the big money would shut us down. And so uh, I don't see, and plus the fact that w- it takes encryption to do that in the well, SEC. I don't think it's ever going to let us do that. Well, no, but I mean, like you could just make it open and public. Like who cares? If we're just uh, sending it, the, who cares? Well, the encryption is what, and to some degree, is what compresses it. So you're doing en- oh, uh, encryption and compression at the I same see. time. And uh, we're not allowed to do the encryption. And even though all we're wanting to do is compression, mm-hmm. they would still see it as encryption. It, it's I it's see. one of those fine li- fine lines, yeah. So I, I, I'm in just, the I'm Just in publish the, the key publicly and call the new mode. <laughs> There you, oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Hey, Chief uh, Chief Vince with the uh, special colored chat. I don't know how you did that, but that's pretty cool. So That was I'm in- the joke in uh, one of the amateur radio clubs I was in was that uh, you can totally do encrypted if you just publish the key publicly somewhere. <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about it in the rule and- of the law. Well, yeah, and, uh, yes and, and no. Publicly they, published can be like you, you put you print it out on a piece of paper and you stuck it up in your window, right? I put yeah, it on that, a roll of toilet paper. That DMR encryption that's there, that's that's old encryption technology. They can crack that in a in a bloody second. Oh, sure. But they still won't let us use it. Right. You know. So under the, the menu system, there is a DVDD set, and that's D star data, which you've now we dove in on a little bit. So if you if you go through this menu, you get down to fast data. So I don't know what this means. So hopefully Jody can figure this out. But under fast data, you can turn it on or off, and then you have some data mode. So I don't know if that's actually data throughput or if it's just – I don't know what this means. That's, that's probably just uh, for 440. My guess is that that's fast data on the 440 uh, band. But I, I agree with uh, – Dawn completely that if you're if you're doing a radio like this it would be really cool if we could actually have a wireless network connection you get your dish right so let, let's say i'm in a geographic location where i have a line of sight to another contact another human being and you you blast with your parabolic at that station and they can hear you there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to explore the higher frequency or higher data rate that that frequency allows i think that would be really really cool but that is a limitation of our of of our network to be honest and everybody that's saying they feel neglected on ft8 i apologize i'm i'm working through some i'm working through the contacts right now we'll catch up we'll get you all in there i promise so that uh, fast data, um, you're flipping between 950 BPS at slow and 3480 at fast. So that's just your serial connection over the air, probably FSK or something like that. Not good enough. Not fast enough. 
No, you're definitely not taking advantage of the full spectrum of that radio. Oh, for Even sure. if you were doing <laughs> audio, you could do V56 modem, you know, and be better than that, so. Oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine if they let loose the reins of terror of ham radio and let us run at the full bandwidth that we could? I guess we're... 300. Uh, I guess we're subtly dancing around that because we're at those frequencies, right? If you think about the frequency of the the data rate or of the radio, right? We could have a a data rate that we transmitted that was very wide, and that would be if you had a solid connection, it would be faster than five G in some cases, depending on how good your signal connection was. Can we do that with amateur radio right now? No, because of our baud rate limits. But there's no reason why we can't request that in the future and should push for that because why not? There's no reason not to. Let's go nuts. Like, let's let's do it. It's awesome. I think I read somewhere in here you're looking at 18 to 25 megahertz bandwidth with this radio. So, yeah, you know, yeah. with orthogonal. You know, multiplexing, you're looking at a 100 megabit channel there. 100 megabit over RF. Think about that. Think about that. Quite, honest, quite honestly, the 300 baud rate should have been done away with 20 years oh, ago. The baud rate limit is a, is disgusting. There's no reason for that to exist. We should not have ever allowed that. Th that needs to go. It needs to go. It needs to be a limit based off of the, the band that we're on. And we we really should identify that some bands, like these super high frequency bands, should just be data bands. Like they should just like allow people to do wideband data and explore the space. Like it it is. Come on, like what's the point? What are we holding? What are, what are we holding back? Let's go. It's I mean, and also they're not like the HF bands where you could be you know messing with somebody halfway around the world, it, you know, and causing interference. It's like these bands don't go super far except line of sight. So could you, you imagine really, though, you know, could you imagine that I, that I, most of the band, could you imagine that I take a parabolic dish and I get it at the right altitude, which right altitude I learned. Uh, if you're trying to make a long distance call on microwave, that's not like climb to the top of a mountain and then point the beam. No, it's like a thousand feet. Like you get to a thousand feet in that space or, you know, it, it, it adjusts a little bit pointed to hawaii could you imagine getting that kind of data throughput to hawaii or or some kind of place like that from a vantage point about a thousand feet that's not difficult for a lot of states to do and if you could do that and have that kind of data throughput that would be insane that would be insane i ah uh, come on everybody get on this train big data big data train Big meme movement. <laughs> we need to in, we need to ship Europe, those memes we, in light speed. It's, it's for you to get hold of the ITU because in Europe we've dropped it, and I'm checking now on the higher frequencies, and there isn't a ban on certain parts that are the band that's dedicated to digital only. There mm -hmm. aren't a data limit set. Oh, I'm loving Mike so, right now. I'm loving Mike. So, so you, it looks like it looks like you you've just got to get because uh, it's ITU that set these things, not the that's FCC. Right. That's right. That's uh, right. That's right. And for Europe, we used to have a seventy-five and three hundred boat. I remember that back in my license in the nineties, uh, and it's gone away, and it's not in the current license anymore. So we must have changed it. I need a monocle. But, I for mean, what there I'm is a right there now. is a I think there is a bandwidth limit set on HF. Because they, they want it as that is a specifically, but I think once you go into VHF, it, it seems to get less and however less and less interference. Yes. You know, they don't seem to be especially above twenty. Uh, you know, um, thirteen sems. See above now, that, the, the, now, you're into quadrature stuff, and I don't even have no clue. So now, so now we say I want bigger bandwidth, but then you say I also want spread spectrum. Yes. Yes. This well, is what we really want. Actually, if you could, if you, again, if you could go onto one band and multi-channelize it, man, you 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 wouldn't even need spread spectrum. Also true, Don. Also true. But I mean, you know, it's it's. I, I guess it's part of the same whole. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. I so. 
I mean, so think about that. Think about that. Like we can, we can. Mode yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. Evidently, there's a D Star mode called DD mode. Yeah, I was just showing and, it on the radio. Yeah, it yeah, exists. And you can you can do 128 kbps internet access across that. Um, That's trash. Have a, you yeah, know how fast well, we could go. Like at the at, at at these super high frequencies, you know how fast oh, that yeah. we could transmit data. I just, we could we could have we could we could make a meshed like a a microwave meshed like mud is the super simple level we could be full like online gaming uh oh Leia's calling mm -hmm. we're in trouble uh oh yeah right, Leia, can... Leia I'm I'm live right now hey what you doing I'm I'm live right now you're you're on the mic. I'm on the mic. Hi, everybody. Can't hear hi. You, so it Hello. They, they can't. Hola. They're all saying hi, but they can't hear you, or you can't hear oh, them. I see. I bought you a pastrami sandwich. Oh, well, thank you. Did you have dinner? No. Okay. How is Edison doing? He is uh, in the corner with an iPad watching regular show. Oh. Okay. Do you need anything before I get home? No, I'm good. When I get home, I'm going to need you to help me unload the car. Is Chloe out? And also pen up Chloe. Chloe's penned up. Okay. How far are you? I am 10 minutes away. Okay. Well, when, when you get in, I'll know, and then I'll help you out, and then I'll be right back to the stream. Okay. All right. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Okay. Well, Want to take a few minutes to unload that truck? Oh yeah. <laughs> I oh my god. I I uh I drove the truck to Crestline, California, which is a pretty nice elevation gap, and it hit the it hit the battery pretty hard. But then on the way back, it was just straight regen the whole way down, and it's like you're getting 12 miles to a kilowatt. Like the it it's all just going up like it didn't exist. Battery and time didn't exist. It just all regened all the way down. And I was nice. still doing like 45, 50 miles an hour. It's like, okay, this is fine. This is good. It's pretty cool. Okay, Josh, I have another question. Yeah, go for it. All right. This is actually from a buddy who's trying to study to get his license. He's he watches your videos and he knows about you, so I'll tell him to watch this later. He's trying to figure out why you're so fired up about the IC905 and its super high frequency capacity for fast scan TV transmission and reception. Even the most intense digital TV broadcast is well within the bandwidth offered by VHF, UHF, the way he understands it. So why are you, or did you cover that in the uh, live stream? I haven't watched watched it yet well so uh, a lot of the time um yeah it's true so you're not going to do a lot with two meters like you're not going to be able to do uh slow scan or sorry fast scan with with uh two meters you can receive a uh, fast scan on 70 centimeters it's not going to be like a good presentation there's going to be some dropped frames and all that stuff but as you go higher in frequency you're going to get the full visual camera frame rate basically and and we're still talking like you know 24 frames per second that kind of thing um so as you go higher in frequency you'll be able to achieve a more data throughput faster and have kind of this unbroken video signal that depends a lot on you know your connection rf wise to the station in question for sure um, but it's, it, 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 you can still do this with 70 centimeters. I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from that. I just don't think you're going to have the same experience with that. If you, if you think about it like that, I guess. I, I think it's only because we're limited by yeah, that, uh, by the FCC again. Mm -hmm. There's no reason we couldn't do it. It's just Come that in. they won't let us compress it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, according to AT, on that particular one, using the standard it does, if you was to do that on 70 SEMs, that would be a 12 meg wide sing signal. Yeah. 
Yeah. We'd have, yeah. That's that on FM. That would basically, you'd have one channel taking up two thirds of the entire bandwidth yeah. of 70s. That is okay why that. that that's pretty much a no go anymore. That that's pretty much why most of the TV ATV groups moved to uh, 23 SEMs where there's a, a load more space. Um, also allowed them to move to FM with full stereo. Right. Uh, if they wanted to use mm. it, it, but it is, there's enough space to do it. And now I believe they do digital modes, uh, digital TV up there as well, which takes a lot less bandwidth, but allows them to do even more uh, in the way of um, uh, interactions between you and the repeater. Uh, so yeah, if you got rid of the baud limit restrictions that we have on ham radio, it would likely turn into something like band rate limits. So I, I agree with you that if, if you had, uh, someone do high speed data or like amateur television on 70 centimeters, that would be a huge portion of the band that would be hogged up by that. So this would be like you'd set a certain bandwidth limit per band, and that's the space you have to live within, which which is where we should have been for a long time, to be honest. Like we, we should have had the ability to say like, hey, uh, we, we should be able to set an appropriate limit based on the frequency space we have allocation for. Uh, as you go higher in frequency, that band rate limit should open up a lot. Right, because again, the frequency increases. If everybody's following me, I hope they get what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think his big question really is why you're so fired up, happy, whatever about the IC905 and its super high frequency capacity for the fast scan TV transmission. Well, yeah, because I mean, like, how how many other radios that come off the shelf that you can plug just a cable into, and you now have a camera pointed at you that you can transmit over the air for for fast scan television? There's nothing that exists in this space. There's nothing that exists that you can just plug into, and now it's like it you're you're on the air. Like, so l l let's put this into perspective. If you go back in time. TV stations, right, with their vans that they would put the mast up and all that, what were they doing? They were doing fast scan television. You're you're talking about our news networks were basically the same kind of concept. They would beam back to the home station, and that's what would go on the air that you would see. Hams have been doing that before they ever got into that mix. And that's been decades now since they've been able to do that. But the fact that we can now do that really easily by just, you know, plugging in and getting on the air, I think it's really cool. Like, I, I think that's the thing that we, we have not had access to. You you could if you, if you built it yourself kind of thing and were a part of that community. But with ICOM doing this, it's a lot of like, let's open this up to everyone and, and make it more accessible, which I think is their goal. I, I think they're trying to make a radio that most people say like, hey, I don't really have a need for this, but I've never really explored this space, so why not try it out? And I think that's what they're trying to do here with it. I think. I think. I would hope. All right. Thank you. I'll make sure he watches this so he gets your exact explanation. Thank you. Yeah. Leia texted me, make sure Edison is fed. <laughs> I did not feed him. He was not fed. I hope I hope she brought food. <laughs> she texted me when she texted me. Edison's gonna get your pastrami sandwich. Oh, that's yeah. only an hour ago. Yeah, you can eat my pastrami sandwich. That's fine. All right. Well, the DX contact's not working out there, so I'm open it back up. We're gonna go. Actually, I'm going to pause for a second and I'm going to close WSJTX and reopen it because it's not tracking contacts. I have a question for you. Yeah, go for it. 
Is there anything more irritating than when you fail to make a contact on FT8 and they just keep sending you a signal? Um, that drives me absolutely insane. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I don't know. I I think I let it go like three or four times and I just move on. I you know I normally do too, but I have some stations that will just come back over and over and over. And you're yeah. like, dude, you can't hear me. Just drop it. Yeah. I mean, they heard you. The, the thing that always amazes me about FT8, it's like you heard them that one time and you're going to make a con. Like, so you made it. You, you, you heard them one time and you're going to you're going to just keep spamming it five times. And nobody. They didn't reply. See, it's not it's not working through the QSOs. This is insane. And it's always like a station that hears me at like a negative 25. It's like, well, so uh, that that's why. Oh, I think Leia's here. Are you here? Uh, then... Okay, I'm coming out right now. So I will be right back, everybody. Uh, hang on to your question, but I agree with you. And uh, enjoy the memes. I'll be right back. Then there's always the stations that like this uh one this one Russian station I think it is is or uh, RK something uh he's a plus one for me right now but he's not hearing me that's interesting hmm. RK six alpha yep oh yeah he's probably got and he could well have his beam you're hearing him off the side of his beam and he's hearing people that are directly in his beam path. Because I've had that problem too before with stations overseas. They're they're like killing me. But um, then when I try to get back to them, they can't hear me for anything because they're not pointed at me. Well, what's funny about that, Don, is he actually jumped from a minus 13 to a plus 1 over the last five minutes. So mm. he, he, he turned his beam this way or something. Yeah, I'm you may be getting him off the side, though, and, um, you know, he's he, he, he have some gain in your direction, but not necessarily uh, as much as, uh, you know, or say it takes, what, 40, uh, about uh, 40 to a minute for an antenna to rotate from one way to the other. So if, if he's in the middle of rotating, you, you don't stop transmitting. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sitting here. Uh, I'm waiting to see him call back again. But there's a bunch of stations coming in now. Yeah, most of them are calling uh, just uh, 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 Eastern Europe CQ. But I tried them. Mm. I didn't get anything. But I just got RN3DD at Neg 9. So that's not too bad. But I'm in Massachusetts, so. You used to get some interesting effects when you're on like two meters with you like a 14 element beam or something, and you just sit there and spin it from one way to the other, you know, from south to south, and just hear the people come in and go. Because, <laughs> you know, those things are really sharp. Uh, and uh, you hear them twice because you hear them as they come into the, as, uh, as you're spinning into them, you'll get them off a side lobe that say, 6 dB, and then they'll drop off the side lobe, and then they come onto the main lobe, and they're like plus 20, and then they go they're gone again, because they're off the main lobe, and then they get picked up by the other side lobe as it goes around, so you end up getting them three times I'm lucky to get anyone once, I uh, have an infed half wave, and that's all I'm using Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I say if they've got a big beam, sometimes you can get some weird effects with uh, because beams aren't a perfect lobe. You know, you get spikies off the sides. You can get yeah. some weird effects if you happen to land in one of them, like positive gain sections. They'll heal you, but you, or rather, you'll hear yeah. you know you'll hear them, but they won't hear you because they're still effectively in a null, and you only need to be just in it. They still won't hear you, but you'll but they've got a lot of gain in the transmission signal. It's really weird how this stuff works. Yeah, look look at that. If you see that video I dropped, and again, I'm not, you don't have to watch it, but um, that is, I ran the, the Hermes light 
with 50 watts with an infed half wave. And I worked um, South Africa with it. And so, I mean, even with a, with a infed half wave, you can, if you're on the right band, again, that was 10 meters, but if you're on the right band at the right time of the day, you never know what you, what you end up working. Yeah, but and, you know the low pattern of an infant half wave on ten meter looks like looks like a hedgehog. And mine's at thirty five feet. So no, I mean as my, I said, my, it, it working weird things. I worked seventy sems into Belgium from Bristol. That was three hundred and sixty five kilometers mm-hmm. with ten with forty watts. You know, that's bad. On a two element beam, that was only a two element beam. at about six dB. So. Mm-hmm. It, but it was a competition uh, day, so they were out to try and work me. So I wouldn't say you could do that every day, but it was interesting. Yeah, the, the nice thing about 10 and 12 is if you get like an infed half wave up, you know, uh, even 15, 20 feet, you are going to get lobes off of it. So you will get some gain. Yeah. It'll be oh, very God, directional. Yeah. yeah, it'll be very directional. And you'll have huge nulls too, but... Yeah, you, you'll you'll get some gain out of that just by having an antenna that's too high for, quote, the band that it's on. But well, it's, it, it's like us, you know, when back in the CB days, you know, we all ran verticals, but we ran them 30 foot off the floor. We didn't run them at floor level. Mm-hmm. We had a 5.8 wave, 30 foot up. And you used to get some amazing results doing that. But, God, they were a pain in the butt because they ended up about 40, 50 feet tall. You know, you had... Did, did, did we ever do anything the way you were supposed to? No, we just lashed it to a farm post and the wind didn't blow too hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I yeah. knew some CB guys that had uh, antennas on top of towers just like they were hams, you know? So, and yeah, they, well, could, they were getting that out. in the UK. Because in the UK, those things were illegal. If, if, an, if a passing policeman saw you, um, he would ring up the DTI, and a little man would come and remove all your equipment for you. Yeah, that's not that's not the way it works here. Here, no. here the here the only authority is the HOA. And back in the when I was in CB, which is in the seventies, there weren't any HOAs really. And even then, that, the that HOA was a fast was... unload, Josh. Uh, so we got Asiatic Russia on Long mm. Path. That was a Long Path Asiatic Russia. So the green, nice. that vertical green line that points subtly European, or I guess that way European, that was Long Path Asiatic Russia. Right on. That was cool. Which station was it? I just got to Russia. Uh, that was RV9FF. Oh, I haven't seen them come across yet. But Don, going back to my uh, infed half wave, it's only about 18 feet off the ground, so it's not really high. And with FT8, you know, for whatever it's worth, I'm still not a huge fan of FT8. It's still, yeah, for me. I worked mm-hmm. uh, D2UI down there in uh, the Congo uh, back on the 10th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've worked him as well, uh, but I don't. Oh, yeah, I was uh, I was on my infed halfway, but I was on the 101D at that point at about 75 watts. But, I mean, there's not going to be a whole hell of a lot of difference between 50 watts and 75 watts well let's let's take a let's take a breath here is there anybody in the chat who hasn't had a question answered i know we're we're starting to dwindle a little bit and that's okay that's about time that people start pulling off so anybody in there with a question ham radio related we'd love to answer it if you've been waiting now's the time pretty much last call good good we answered all the questions well, except the movie one. Yeah, so who went and saw John Wick 4? Who's seen it? Before we go to that, I wanted to make sure to say thanks. Uh, thanks for family. Thanks for this green bean casserole. What are we talking about? Thanks for the... Uh, I'm uh, past my extra last Friday, and I missed the stream. I wanted to come on and thank uh, you and... Oh. Uh, Nate and uh, all the VC, VEs, and uh, thanks to you, I'm now I'm an extra. And uh, last night, with my new extra privileges, I talked to Africa on a single sideband at uh, 
7.145, where I wasn't allowed to go. Thanks again. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations, mm -hmm. man. Do you feel good? Feel good? Like worth the effort? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I had, I had pretty much stopped hamming there for a while just doing FTA because I was determined to study and get my extra and get it over with. And uh, yeah. I finally did. And then, uh, then uh, last night I was like, oh, yeah, I can go up there where I might not be able to talk. So it was very cool. That is awesome. Right Congratulations. That's that's super cool. I'm uh I'm, I'm very happy for your for your uh, continuation in the hobby and everybody watching. Get get the next level. If you're if you're a technician, I highly highly encourage you to get your general. That's when a lot of the HF bands open up. That's what allows me to do this crazy stuff that I'm doing above my head here. Uh, you'll be shocked who who you can make contacts with, even with a a suboptimal antenna. Particularly as we go into the high. See, right now this has exploded. All those okay, all those blue lines. Th this is very interesting. What just happened above my head? All those blue lines are signal paths that just opened up. Those are people that I'm hearing bi-directional contacts on right now. That is huge when you start seeing the blue lines explode like that that's a that's a signal path boom that's all part of what you get into when you get into general vhf uhf is great obviously we're talking about super high frequency there's a ton of cool stuff you can do but for me this like this makes me go super nuts like this is awesome i i love it i love seeing this so Please encourage you to get your general. At least think about getting your general, please. This all started for me uh, watching. Oh, we lost you. Come back. It all started for me. Uh, I'm a big Formula One fan, and I uh, <laughs> I kept hearing the acknowledgement tones, and then I was looking on YouTube for what that was, and it was your uh, AnyTone 878, of which I own several now. Oh. And the that got me into, got my technician license, got away into DMR, and then uh, watching these streams and that cool map, had to get my general, and then uh, I just didn't want to have to start studying again later. Uh, hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with, like, I just don't want to do this again. Let's just get it all done. I love it. I love it. So congratulations again. You deserve it. Good for you. Thanks. Now I'm on to CW. Uh, there you go. That's you know that's the right progression for me. Is it, get your get your general, get your extra. Just just knock it all out so you don't have to think about it again. And then the real the real thing is is CW. That's the that's the late game prestige class of ham radio. Like if you if you think about things like as MMOs as I do, that is where you want to be. That's the prestige class. That's where you start getting the elite pauldrons and all that stuff. You get your CW. That's where you want to be, if you know what I'm talking about. And as a bonus, I uh, got a PhD in Discord in the last couple of days, too, because I was not, <laughs> yeah. I swore off while I was studying. It's like I can't study and do Discord. And uh, it's quite a learning curve. Yeah, you did it, man. You sound good. So I love it. I love the uh, I love the intensity of learning you got. You're, you're like, I'll, I'll hit a wall and I'll just keep going. That's awesome. Good for you. I think that's one thing I've found that a hams have in common is uh, we all like to learn stuff. We we like to be challenged. I, I think that that's one thing I can say with hams is that uh, we like to we like to almost suffer through a problem. Like I'm I'm uncomfortable in the situation I'm at. The problem's not done. That makes me uncomfortable. And then I don't know how to solve it. That also makes me uncomfortable. And I have to surmount this task. I, I love that. I love that about our community. It's awesome. Right. It, a lot of people you meet in the real world seem to be afraid to uh, either afraid to admit they don't know something or afraid that they're going to accidentally learn something. You know, there's a lot of people tell me, you're the smartest guy I know. What are you studying for? That's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is about people. Um, and and this is not against anybody. I, I don't mean this is a slight against anybody, but 
There are some folks who just are, uh, they find an interest in being uncomfortable and, and going after learning more. And it, it, it doesn't have to be any one thing, but they just embrace the concept of like, I want, I want to know more. And then there are some folks who are just like, hey, I, I just, I got my lane. I'm going to stick in my lane and, and that's it. And I, I just, I don't know how, you know, like, I don't know how you would instill the, like, I want people to learn more. Like, I don't know how to instill that in people. I don't know how to make them want to pursue amateur radio other than, like, show how cool it is. That's that's the only thing I can do at this point. Yeah, when I when I came in today at the uh, uh, at the park and I was, you know, checking in with the rangers and stuff, the lady was going... Uh, I, I said, yeah, I'm here. I'm going to do the radio. And she goes, oh, are you doing that Texas POTUS, uh, Texas Parks on the Air? And I said, well, yeah, I'll try to do that. And she, ha she had a flyer that somebody had driven in today and gave her the flyer wow. to let her know about it. And she, she, her, she said, yeah, my dad's a ham, but I didn't know you guys did the park stuff. Oh, I said, that's oh, so yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, I love yeah. that. See, yeah. okay. Okay, so uh, this is I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into again another like deep dive here. I feel that the only way you make people know about a term or a concept is if you normalize it, right? So if we said, "Have you heard about ham radio?" to just Joe on the street. You might get back, oh, my grandfather used to be a ham radio operator. So they already were adjacent to it. But if you run into somebody that had no concept of what ham radio was and you were banking on them knowing about it from like hams upon hams, a lineage of hams, then it's always going to be the sliding scale to very few hams. But if you normalize it and you put it out into the public spectacle that people can see it and people ask questions and you answer them, then that will grow the, the greater knowledge of what ham radio is. Even if they're not interested in it, they will come back and say, oh, yeah, I've heard about that. I bumped into a guy that was in a park and he was doing ham radio, right? Well, to whatever understanding they have of what you were doing, they heard about it. And that's the key thing. And the fact that somebody took a step to go like, hey, I got a flyer and I'm passing out these flyers to people to let them know about this ham radio event that's going on. That's normalizing the hobby, meaning Joe Average, Joe Muggle, Joe Normie has heard about ham radio in some factor. And that's the, 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 the touch point that we need to get to. Is like when people roll up on you, like they're riding their mountain bike and they're like, what the hell are you doing with setting this antenna up? And you're doing part, you know, you're doing parks on the air and they ask you, what the hell are you doing? Are you talking to aliens? That's the person you want to hit because they don't know what the heck you're doing. Even if they don't have like a frame of reference of what ham radio is, that's the person, particularly that person to say like, oh, I'm doing amateur radio. I am trying to have an off grid solution or a personal solution with another person that has an antenna and we don't have any services between us we don't use at&t or verizon or whatever we're just going point to point and where's he at oh he's in slovakia it's like oh wow that's amazing you you mean to say that you were talking to somebody in another continent over the atlantic ocean well wow, that's really impressive and if you can frame it in that sense they will walk away from this situation going wow i i didn't know that was even a thing that's kind of cool. And it, it may become nothing, but those contacts, those people that you're reaching for the first time, those are the people we need to like talk to. Those are the people like honestly, POTA for doing what it is doing has been like a huge boon, not just on ham radio, like to get people out and be active, but it is a huge, huge improvement on the forward-facing aspect of ham radio, putting some of the best individuals of ham radio in the public that get in front of people and can talk about our hobby. It has been amazing, and I, I give solid kudos for that. It, I, I love it. I love everything they're doing.
We had a group today at our POTA activation with the club that came by and asked if we work for NASA, and we had to have that conversation. I love them. that, too. That's super cool. Yeah. yeah. I just tell them yes. I'm just kidding. I was like, no, I wish. Instead, I'm just a nerd out here in a parking lot talking to people on radio waves. Yeah, but no, see, no, that... no, no, no. The, 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 the ahead, bad one is when you get it. The bad one is when you get asked, are you the FBI? Mm. No, so, so, so if you get the I NASA question... Yes. If you get the NASA question, this is a really fun thing you can do. You can say, like, no, but, like, check this out. Did you know that our atmosphere has layers? And they're like, well, no, I didn't. I don't know. Does it? I didn't know that. And you go, yeah. So during the day, certain at atmospheric layers are more energized than others. And that energy comes from the sun. And that allows me, when I'm transmitting on my radio, my RF actually bounces off of those energetic layers and allows me to do beyond line of sight communication and beyond line of sight communication like what is that it's like well our earth is actually round i don't know if you knew this but it's it's a round spheroid globe that we bounce our signals over so that like what nasa is doing with satellites we're doing with a couple of hundred dollars of radio and a wire isn't that crazy and and you, you start like to that. you can have the juxtaposition of say. Right, you have the juxtaposition of NASA billions of dollars to put a satellite into space. I'm doing the same kind of thing by bouncing radio waves off of the atmosphere. Isn't that cool? Like, but Josh, I'm a middle school science teacher, and that means I'm working. What do you mean? If you're, oh, if you're teaching people, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, even better. Don't yeah. talk to me. I'm on my off hours. I don't. I don't want <laughs> to my hobbies with my job. What's wrong with you? Yeah, that, science teacher. <laughs> I, so I, that's right. why you buy. That's why you go to hamradiocrashcourse dot com and you are uh, hamtactical dot com and you get our shirt that explains what you're doing on the back. Is this the one? No, it's not the one. Uh, then they can just then you say, "Listen to me. I'm a teacher. I had to deal with your asshole kids all day, all week. Read the back of my shirt that explains what I'm doing." <laughs> I think I'll just say yes next time. Yeah, I work for NASA. Yes. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, when they I, walk up and ask what you're doing, just tell them you're trying to meet I, women. I just like I, I encourage everybody to to see those situations as this like wow moment. Like you you could be the 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 guy that just blows people's minds up with amateur radio. I've done this in multiple occasions. I was in a park in Seal Beach, California. I set up and I had a a bunch of ladies come up and they were asking me like. What are you doing? And they, and they had and I don't want to say they went like Karen on me or anything, but they had that like I'm already on the negative side of what you're doing, but they decided to ask. And I said, "Oh, you know what? This is like you caught me at a really good time. I'm making contacts over our atmosphere point to point. No service provider, no AT&T, no Verizon. Check this out." And I was literally making a contact with someone in Alaska from from California. And they the, and and the the contact said, yeah, I'm in Alaska, you know, blah blah blah. I logged the contact, all that. And I'm like, that was someone in Alaska that you heard, and 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 I was like, yeah, I was literally, you heard them. I was talking to them, and they went, did you do that? Like, is that a a cell phone thing or is it? And I was like, no, that antenna that you guys were commenting on earlier, that wire, that that you know, it was it was a buddy pole, uh, or buddy stick, the buddy stick pro. And like that thing you commented on, you're like, what, why do you need this? That's why. So that I could talk to someone in Alaska. And they were like, oh, that's really cool. And you could literally see the, the Karen energy just dissolve into just, this is cool. This is like, wow. There was nobody in between you. You went from station to station and they were like, wow, that's impressive. That's really cool that you were able to do that. And every time you all are making contacts on a POTA, like if, if you just turned, like if someone's watching you, if you just turned and said, Missouri, Minnesota, Ohio, every time you made a contact and you're in whatever state you're in and you just said like, oh, that, that, that person was in Vermont. That's cool. Like that was, that's, that's pretty awesome. And then you get a DX, like if they're watching you and you hit a DX and they're like, what? Like you're doing this right now? And you're like, yeah. And it was like, you know, 
however many dollars or whatever, you throw some number out there. It's like, yeah, this is what I do for a hobby. It's kind of like fishing, but I'm fishing for like, I'm fishing for, you know, radio contacts. It's kind of what it is. You just have to like have that connective tissue. Like everybody understands fishing. Everybody understands these other concepts. That's You just need to draw those lines to people to get them to like, again, normalize the concept of people being into this kind of thing. And once you do that, like you will see the hobby grow huge if you just keep driving through the fact that like it's not that difficult. Everything's pretty easy. It all makes a little bit of sense. And it's pretty amazing if you think about it. I'll tell you where it's Go ahead, go ahead. I tell you where it's good for that. The the first time I set up at uh, the beach on HF, oh yeah, I had so many people, so many people came by. What are you doing? I was like, oh, let me tell you about it. I spent matter of fact, I spent more time telling people what I was doing than doing what I was doing, but I enjoyed it, and it was so much fun because I, people, some of them had never heard about it, and I was like, you know, so even if it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. Be like uh, like Hatteras or something like that, you could still go to. You still set up, and it's a good place to. And you get DX, and then you get to hear you, and then you know, you can you can say like you said, I just talked to, you know, somebody in Eastern Europe, whoever. Yeah, so whoever. you're probably like me. I I love it when people walk up to me and ask me like, you know, what am I doing? I love it when they walk up and they're kind of negative, like, are you a spy? Like, are are you like, are you talking to aliens? Like, I love it when people walk up like that. Because you can you can completely disarm them. Like you can show them what you're doing and then you can just watch the facade change instantly in their faces. And I love that about ham radio. I love that. It it is it is so cool to be in a situation where you, you could be a teacher, right? Because you you are, like regardless of whether you want to be or not, and whether you elect to take this on for yourself or not. You, you are in a situation where you could be teaching people about what RF propagation is and how radio frequencies work. And it's so much fun if, if you just, like, play around with it a little bit and, and turn it into, you know, whatever it is that makes you passionate about the hobby and then, you know, teach people about it. And you have the best part about this. And, and so as, I'm not a teacher. We have a teacher here. And, and so correct me if I'm wrong. You have all the material in front of you to demonstrate the skill or the understanding that you're trying to teach. And the demonstration of it is the best thing because they cannot there, – there's no refutation of that. They just look at it and go like, oh my gosh, you were literally talking to somebody in Alaska from the previous example. Demonstration is the best thing. It's the same thing with YouTube. I want to show you what I'm doing, not just tell you what I'm doing. Because the showing removes all doubt, and that's kind of the point. I don't know. Teacher, would you like to add your thoughts? I'd agree. Yeah. Plus, you already have the engagement aspect, which is the hardest part. So when they're asking you questions, they're already they're already seeking. Well, yeah. Well, th even, that's right. That's right. Even negative. Even negative seeking. Even yes. Negative they're already seeking so you've already got the engagement side so yes i would agree with you beautiful yep yep uh oh we got a big potentially big contact here big contact into into africa i'm sitting here like listening I'm to you guys to watching you all play on ft8 wishing mm -hmm. i would have put my antenna back up when i got home from our poda today and i didn't and now i'm sitting here like on the sideline very irritating i am pointing the antenna for this yeah, I'm, are you, you saw where I worked uh, South Africa with my Hermes, right? Uh, no, I didn't. Yeah, I, wor I worked them uh, a couple of days ago. In fact, that video I dropped a little while ago, I've got the contact at the back of it. Now, I don't have the recorded video, just the output from the uh, deal, but I, I added to my stack of stuff, and everybody keeps teasing me about the t stack that you see in the video, but, um, uh, I, uh, yeah, I worked South Africa, uh, the other day, no problem. Um, uh, with, uh, 50 Watts. That's awesome. Yeah. I, that was on 10 meters, but yeah. From the States though, doing, uh, doing the, the South African contacts, that's actually a little bit harder. 
Ontario uh, against is, Europe because you can pretty good. you can go over yeah. the North Pole and hit uh, Europe pretty easily. Short path, like that's mm -hmm. that's our that's actually one of the faster ways to hit them, particularly where I'm at, is to just go over the the North Pole and go straight. Hey Josh, I gotta uh, ask yeah D two Y U D two Y U is yeah. where, I'm, where I'm hitting. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Question. Oh, I was going to ask the same question Liberty Cave was asking. Is Was that DTYU? Yep. Well, I mean, hopefully. We'll see if they can hear me. Nope, they can't hear me. They're calling CQ again. Bummer. See, again, it's kind of hard. The other thing is, too, like if you're, if you're out somewhere and someone's interested enough, I mean, as long as you're, you know, Going with the rules about third party contacts, there's no reason you can't let them try it. Oh, that's true too. Good point. Like like I've you know, I think if somebody was interested enough, I'd be like, Well, hey, you wanna give a shot? I actually asked one person down on the beach one day, they because they stuck around long enough and they were like, Nah, I won't do it today. I was like, Okay. But you know, you never know. If someone's that interested if it's someone's really interested, they might they might yeah, yeah, okay. It's um <laughs> No, go ahead, go ahead. Any, anytime, talking. like, um, like my friends bring their kids over, I just ask them. Like, if they ask me about the radios, I'm like, "You want to try it? Let's see if we can talk to Mike." It just can't hurt. I um, I love it. I was gonna mention, yeah, you, you might want to record a couple of QSOs on your SD card just in case the bands dry up right when you need to perform a demo. <laughs> At least you'll have something in the can you can play back for them. Program just program your kid calling CQ uh, into the uh, memory channels and or not memories but the uh, you know the whatever <laughs> and uh, save that for for when when it seems like they've dried up and then you'll start getting people back. At least keep a log book. Yeah, we can't do that unfortunately in Europe. It's illegal for third parties to use radios in any way. So. You guys don't right. have any third party stuff? Well, no, they're uh... we're not allowed. It's uh, well, it's a long explanation, but we're we're not allowed. It's uh, it is under review at the moment. There's a review going on, so maybe it will change. Well, that'd be good. Yeah, I mean, you know, even the U.S. we have to have a uh, we're not allowed third party with everybody. Uh, it really it depends on the country. So, but. Uh, Certainly can do third party with uh, anybody in the U.S. I guess I'm, I'm uh, getting out a little bit. I went to, uh, we went to a, uh, Dan the Daniel Boone National Forest is, well, it's huge, so it's not hard to hit it from here. Uh, I, I can drive like, like 15 minutes south and, and I'm in the Daniel Boone National Forest at a, uh, like a park area where they have like, it was like a picnic area actually. And, um, we, um, for my, like the day before my birthday, we went, my five-year-old, I was like, hey, come on, let's go set up, go do a poda. So we, we went and he got to talk to a guy in Florida and he, he wasn't really interested in the poda and he was, um, but he was super excited to talk to that guy in Florida and that was a lot of fun. And then, uh, then we went and played on the playground afterwards. <laughs> That's in Kentucky, right? I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, Kentucky. Um, I'm in Somerset. So um, there's actually, there's a couple. I, well, I didn't want to do Burnside, but I, there's actually like three potas within like 20 minutes of here, which is actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, we got a bunch here. I'm in, I'm in Tennessee, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I, just, I just got Croatia with their Hermes, so. I think the forest. I think there the for, the Daniel Boone Forest National Forest goes down into Tennessee too. Yeah, on the north side, uh, up in what the Cumberland area or something like that. Yeah, that's where I be. Yeah, I'm I'm on the other side. I'm in uh, Cherokee National Forest is here in my county, and then uh, I can be in the Smokies in no time. So you're over in um, like Western North Carolina. 
No, no, I'm in I'm in Tennessee, but I can be in North Carolina. Well, oh, ta- I'm tell, sorry. tell the dragon, Tennessee. yeah, tell the dragon is about 20 minutes. I know where you're at. I'm my oh. house. I'm, yeah, I've been there. That's Dude, good. Tail the Dragon is one of my dream little road tours Josh, that I could do in a hot J- little sports Josh, car. Oh, did I, did I'd, I, I'd love I, it. I tell you, the the first time I, I was a SAG unit, yeah, um, <laughs> was for the first time I drove on the on the Dragon. Yeah, and I drove the Dragon back and forth and back and forth. I must have put three four hundred miles, maybe more. Nice. Just driving back and forth on that. I had some on guy. What? In a little what, were what were you driving? What were you driving? My pickup. My pickup. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was, I was, well, you know, it was a, we have, we, every year we do what they call it, they call the chair hollow challenge, which is a bike ride, 118 mile bike ride mm-hmm. um, for the people that are crazy enough to do that. And we don't have any LEOs. They don't shut down any, any part oh, of the so road. Oh, so it's got road. cars whipping through that whole thing while, while bikes are on there? Yes, sir. Wow. All right. Yeah. And I had one impatient guy. There's a, there's, there's one really bad hairpin turn uh on the dragon yeah uh and uh i was coming back to one of the checkpoints and somebody got impatient around that hairpin was going to pass some bicyclists he kind of swerved out in front of me and and i'm like dude my truck's not that big but i'll run right over your hood how'd that go uh yeah he freaked out (laughs) Do do you still get the odd tractor trailer coming through there uh not realizing where they're at and and getting stuck and they're not they're not supposed to go on that road. Oh, I, I know they're yeah. not supposed to, but you know, every now and then you, well, there's you always see pictures. You see pictures of them stuck where they just they followed a GPS and, and weren't, you know, new weren't people paying or, attention and yeah. you know the signs it's that say no truck. People get real hurt when that happens. <laughs> but it's happened. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well be, and that's I like, know if they crack down on it or not. I'd like yeah. to have a I'd like to have a Corvette. Just a Corvette and just drive the tail of the dragon. Just you know, sporty, oh, but one? not too crazy. I, you, you you'd be better with your S two thousand, Josh. Uh, is it is it that tight? Is it super tight? Super tight turns. Yeah, uh, some, some of them are. Tight, some yeah. of them are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then maybe the S two thousand would be better. Uh, yeah, that's S two thousand. Oh my oh, god, it'd be fun. It's I mean, still it'd the... be, it's really going to be fun in anything. Uh, I mean, honestly, like you get a Mazda Miata out there, you're probably gonna have a blast. Oh. I mean, you get a lot of these guys that like are in little clubs, like yeah, car yeah, yeah. clubs that all they all have the same kind of car, you know, make, but maybe mm. you know they're they're all like different customized, but they're all kind of the same type of car, and they'll get out there. So you'll see like little packs, four, five, six, eight, <laughs> um, you know, VWs. Uh, <laughs> or or the kit yeah. cars, or and of course the the guys the guys on the Harleys are the best behaved ones. I have to major kudos to the Harley riders because because they're they're the ones that are not going nuts on it. So what about the guys on the crotch rockets? They're the nuts ones. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. They're they're yeah. trying to race it and see how fast they can go. Yeah, and this friend of mine does that. He picks places in the United States that have really really curvy roads, and he specifically oh, takes his crotch rocket out there. Oh, that's that's the whole point of having one. That's the tail of the dragon concerned. for sure. Oh, I would. That's I would. the thing. Like I, we had like we always. Like I used to ride sport bikes, and we used to like. There was always these groups of people that would just ride from parking lot to parking lot, and it was like, why are you even like, why do you even have a sport bike? Like we, I'd like me and a couple other people, and we just go to like North Carolina and and then Tennessee, and we just ride around and like find places to ride. That's the whole point of it. Oh. Especially before you have kids. Yeah, well, yeah I, mean, I like I, I like that last part. That life. last part is the uh, the most telling. Before kids, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but honestly, I oh man, I, I uh, one of the one of the biggest regrets in my life is selling that car. I should have never sold that S two thousand. I should have never sold it. I should. Yeah, that's a that's a good nope. car. Here's the reason I sold it. Come and walk in right in right now. Come and say hi. Come and say hi. I was going to anyway. Huh? I was going to anyway. Okay, say hi. Go ahead. Hi. Get get a little closer. Hi. Here's the reason I sold the S2000. Hi. Here is the reason. Hello. A dimple. On your hairs. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just wanted it. if they got food yet. Did you get, you got food. You're with mom. Mom took care of you. I know. He's getting big, man. Did you eat his sandwich, Josh? Adapter port. Huh? 
Do you have a USB C adapter? Yeah, of course I do. What do you mean? Do you have what? a USB adapter? Yeah, I've got oh. all the adapters. What, what do you Whatever want you ask him for, don't ask him for an SD card. He doesn't know where those are. The Apple Watch. No, he's he doesn't have any SD cards. <laughs> and he USB? definitely doesn't know how to format one. Or USB C. Uh oh. Okay. What did he do? What did, oh, is that what happened? Was that what happened last week? Oh no. No, that was tonight. Okay. All right. Oh man, pictures. And the best part was seriously though. Any of that. I, I am uh, I'm of the strongest opinion that you should not sell the car you love the most because you have kids. <laughs> Don't sell it. Yeah. Just just pack it away somewhere and and then say we'll figure it out. Just say that over and over again. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Mm. We'll, yeah, all my... we'll all figure it out. It'll all get figured out. Yeah, I my, did my uh, I traded my 19 bullet Mustang on a 21 F150. Oh. Yeah, my uh, uh, my wife made me sell my uh, eighty three Trans Am, oh. and I I bought that some bitch brand new, and she didn't like it because it was stick shift, and oh, oh man, I love that car. <laughs> but you know what I love about my truck that I that I hated about that Mustang is that I wasn't going to drill a hole in the roof of that Mustang to put an antenna in it. Hmm. I got all kind of room for antennas on that truck. Good. Yeah, I would. I, okay, thank you. She she kept her Camaro, but uh, which broke down all which the time. Which was automatic. Which was automatic. Yeah, it is automatic, but it broke down all the time. And my uh, Trans Am, I I from the day I bought it, I never had it in the shop. Shop. It 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 was just that good. And um, a friend of mine had an '82 Trans Am, and that su sucker was so hard to shift, and it was four speed. And mine was five exactly. speed on the eighty three, and it was just butter yeah, smooth. Been. Exactly I know. I got a buddy that uh, his his wife has a third gen um, Trans Am, and he's done a uh, he does he's done an LS swap in it, and it's oh. uh, it's turned out really nice. Wait, an LS it's, swap uh, in what? It's a, a third gen Trans Am, mm. like the uh, like the kind of like boxy wedge shape kind of one. Mm. Yeah, it's, like, um, do you mean the older style? Um, hang on, I because they they changed they changed body styles in eighty two. Take care of it. Yeah, it's um. Hang on, for, I don't remember what year it is. Mine had the like flip up lights, like when you turn the lights on, they would flip up out of the body of the car. Uh, the older ones, like the headlight, there there was an actual grill in the front of it. Like mine looked like the kit car from uh, uh, Knight Rider. That, that's a, uh, that, that uh, kit didn't take off as much as the DeLorean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I'm, I, I'm just trying to describe what mine looked like. No, but I mean bit. like in the, uh, in the enthusiast like area, when, when you see a kit show up, yeah, like but to, when you, when to, you, to coffee when, and hot rods or whatever you do on the Sundays, yeah. like that when that you, that car doesn't have the same gravitas as the DeLorean. Like when people get all you, kitted out. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say if you know if you know somebody who who's done one, they probably mm -hmm. have several that they're working on. By the way, they, the, they love that, that that Firebird is a is a good platform for a vehicle for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my bosses had a Fiero, and I never quite understood Ooh. that car. But uh... yeah, mid-engine <laughs> oh, man. I, I, man. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I don't like them. I think they're weird, and I it, it, like it's them. like the it's like the MR2 guys. The MR2 mm -hmm. guys, all mid-engine, super lightweight, super low, like short wheelbase, real twisty. They get real sketchy on you on tight turns. Like oh, yeah, they, it, they're mm -hmm. very unforgiving. Yeah, they they, they well, the S2000s that way too. It's it's like uh, I will I will. I will wreck your life if you let me do it, and I will let you do it. <laughs> so here you go. <laughs> There's too much power that you should have in the rear end. That's what's so fun about the smaller car. Like, like it's just like like you go take a you take a Mustang with like say like four. Okay, mine had four eighty. I, yeah. I couldn't really. I mean, and that's mild compared to some of the like higher end stuff now. And because it's heavy and uh, it's super heavy. Yeah, and and you like if you really open it up, you're doing very illegal things, like very illegal things. Like if if you really like like look at what you're doing, if you decide to like just 
like push it hard because like the suspension on them is really good. And mm -hmm. you know now, and, well, depending, just, depending, wait, it depends. What uh, are you talking about? Which Mustang are you talking? You're talking about Fox my body 19, or newer? My nineteen was a lot better. Than oh, the that, that's not a Fox really. body. Okay, early, no, uh, more new. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I just mean like if you take some of these like some of these cars that are have like higher performance, and and you push them, you're doing some very illegal stuff, and you can get in like a Mazda Miata and just throw it around as hard as you want and just and it's, really yeah. enjoy it. It's, yes, it's more fun. It's more yes. fun than having a bunch but, of power you can't use. There, I mean, there are so many good cars that are that '90s era before everybody, everything got so bloated. Like if you look at a Challenger today, like the curb weight on the Challenger, which is the two door coupe, is the heaviest car that's ever been ex yeah, in existence. Boat. They're so heavy. If you go back to the 90s and you get yourself like a Miata, like, the, the, well, there's nothing that compares to that. That's like the super light style. But even if you're talking like some of the Mustangs are light in comparison, the Camaros, mm. like the, the old school LS Camaros, the SS Camaros, that is a that is a freaking cool car and and not too hard to get yourself into right now. Well, I mean, it, it now everybody wants like top dollar for their LS Camaros, but it, it, it's still like it, it's pretty cool. Like we're we're in a new age of muscle cars almost because we came out of the '70s into the '90s, and the '90s opened up like a ton of really interesting cars that like you don't pay a ton. They're already like now in the kind of the the collector space, but. You won't pay a ton for them in comparison to like a, you know, '67 Chevelle or something like that, which is just unobtainium right now. Um, yeah, or, or or a '67 Goat. Oh my God! You, go ahead, go ahead. I, I tell you, what's funny. The, like, there's cars that I hated in the '90s, like the body styles I hated in the '90s, and now, like for some reason, I love them. I, I like have totally changed, and I love them. Like. uh I don't know. I'm trying to think. Well, like the like the SN95 Mustang, like that body style, I hated it, and now I'm like, it's starting to grow on me. And the Fox bodies, I absolutely hated, but now I really kind of want one. Yes, Just I I agree. I love the I I like the look of the Fox body Mustang. Growing up, I didn't I didn't want anything to do with them. I'll tell you the one that like has grown on me more than anything, and I want one really bad, and it, it it's unobtainium now. You, you I I don't think I could get one. A freaking Grand National. I want a Grand National so bad. I I would, I I ah. Uh, if, if it's a reasonable price Grand National that is good, I would I would plop the cash down and buy it. I I want one so bad. Yeah, they're they're so hard to find. Watch yeah. legit street cars then. What's that? YouTube channel called Legit Street Cars. Yeah, I, I just bought I, one. Oh God, that. The, that's and a whole it, world. Nice. Yeah, that's and a whole world nice. of figuring out what a good Grand National is right now because there's a lot of people that make like they're they're like clone Monte Carlo SSs and other different versions of the Grand National. There were yeah. actually a lot. At least you. I mean, if I buy a, if I had the money and I I don't. If I had the money, I can't even buy a V8 Mustang over here. We got stuck with we're stuck with the silly the silly crappy ecotech three liter thing that right you know right. sounds like a bloody hairdryer or the v6 if you've got a lot of money i mean i don't mind v6s but could because you know i'm old I'm british straight sixes is the world to me but yeah but you got access to like lotus and stuff like that right like lotus well, is a you, high dollar high dollar but to, super low weight super low, low weight. to trouble usually serious <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well man of the Lotus Cortina, that I think that was amazing. That uh, thing, but, uh, like, uh, who's who's got the uh, who who's the hot hatch in the UK? Like, who makes the hot hatch in the UK? Like, uh, uh, it's a, it's the Golf GTI. Is oh, it's king. still VW. Uh, okay, yeah. Cl yeah. Closely followed by some of the Peugeots and and uh, uh, and the other thing because Vauxhall disappeared. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah. They're now part of Peugeot, so they're gone. Yeah, but and Peugeot's of course the, 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 the Peugeot's and good. of course they're pretty good. I mean, I learned to drive in a two hundred five Peugeot, but the the um the of course you still got some of the Ford, the British Fords, but uh, it, you know times are hard, and that stupid battery crap. Mm -hmm. 
See, that's that's one thing that like uh American cars have less of a problem than like UK cars is the wiring. That's always like a thing with like UK cars and and some of the wiring that you deal with. I don't think that we have the same problem with that, but we we get hit with having to have the lights on more and vehicles yeah. bursting into yeah. flames because they really weren't meant for that. Yeah. In fact, I, there was even a series of Honda motorbikes that did the same. Yeah. They just weren't meant to have the lights on for that extended periods. And, right. Yeah, right. not good. <laughs> yeah, there's a... Uh, I I always like British cars a lot. I, I still want an MGB. Well, they make them new. If you if you really got a lot of money, you can buy all the parts. Uh, I just well, I you know I passed one. I want an MGB GT. That's what I want. Yeah, because the owners' club bought all the molds. They bought everything. They got they oh. got it set up. You so could literally. Oh, well, they can. They can make them to order. You know, they you got a, they like queue up a load of them and then they make them. They bought all the welding plan everything. Same with minis. You can buy any part of a mini. So it's it's out there if you do a bit of research, you know. We had we had someone trade one in at uh, at our work one day, and I almost bought it, and I didn't do it. I should have because I actually was in really good shape, and I liked it, and I didn't buy it. They were fun. I mean, I, I just a small car, but they're so they're so fun and neat and fun. I watched my mate rebuild his wrongly, it. and um, he had it jacked up when he welded the bottom sills in, not realizing that they were sort of too tall. And when he put it on the ground, it had a sort of C shape. <laughs> it was, it was sort of like uh, um, someone had held it up, and then it had sagged either end. So I told me he should jump it over a bridge, but he wasn't impressed. That this whole conversation reminds me of the guy with the antenna on the on the muscle car. Oh, is this from the podcast? Yeah, from the podcast. Oh. So, okay, actually, actually, this is a really good question to ask of the chat here. So we have, we have a, a, a podcast listener uh, who has a classic Nova, and they want to do a, some kind of antenna switch or something like that that will allow them to use the stock antenna to have a ham radio in their, in their car. So I was very adamant of just saying, let go of all of that. Like, just just have an external antenna and then take it out when you're done with it and be done with it. But they were like, no, nope, I'm unwilling to do that. I want, a, I want a stock antenna, and I want to do ham radio on that antenna. And I was like, you, you, cannot, you cannot do that. That's like an FM receiving antenna. It doesn't work. It's not acceptable in any capacity. Uh, Sounds like a fun project. But uh, yeah, so th there's people that came back and said like, okay, well, we could do like an internal antenna in the, the roof of the car and, it, you know, they can transmit on that or they could put a, uh, they, they could use the same mount and put a longer whip on it and then just dive it back down for FM receiving and AM receiving. So many solutions came it. in. But at the same time, it's like, I, like it's they're fundamentally different, right? Like when you get down to it, it's. I didn't get that. Did I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I mean, what's different is the frequency, right? And also that it's receiving, but really, it's it's a whip antenna. So in that case, it shouldn't right. be. Well, the feed line too hard to adapt. Stage. Is the feed line is probably not fifty ohms either. That's true. Right, too. but if you. Yeah. It, if you just want the cosmetic appearance that it's the same antenna, then you could modify anything underneath that mounting point. So you could pull everything off and run your own feed line, uh, shove a loading coil at the very bottom of it that's hidden underneath everything, etc. Oh, like, I agree. But have a have a 50 ohm feed line set up so that it would like you yeah, know, and even if it's 75 it ohm, antenna, like that's yeah. only a it's only a 1.5 SWR mismatch. Right. Comment. Yeah, go ahead, Rob. Um, 
Oh, they it's Mike. Sorry, it's Mike. Jesus. Mike. That's Sorry. All, I'll let you off. Uh, they used to make a gadget in, in Radio oh, Shack. Sorry, Mike. That was Sorry. specifically designed for that. Yes. But it was yes. never any good. It, it yeah. was a pile of gut. It was like a little tin box. You plugged your... You you plugged your uh, CB and and it uh, it split the signal so you didn't blow your normal stereo up, and and then it had a coil. Uh, you know it used to make the difference up between the length of the aerial and the, but it was never any good. Right. So actually, so, people you know, people like mention that it didn't matter. <laughs> people mention that in the in in the uh, in the podcast emails. They're like, oh yeah, once upon a time people did that, and what they did was they bumped it up to CW. Or uh, sorry, CB. So, bumping it up to CB was a thing that like it was on Buicks and Cadillacs. It was actually like a it was an accessory that you could buy, uh, a, an up converter, down converter, or whatever you want for whatever radio you wanted to put in the in in the car. But in his case, he has a proper '60s era Nova, and he wants like you know just one antenna on it he doesn't want anything else and i was like i don't know man <laughs> you're working really hard to avoid the real solution to the problem <laughs> i mean what 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 bands is he looking for he wanted a, that makes he a wanted a difference. two meter ham radio so two meters and seven so two meters. meter is actually two meter you actually need a shorter antenna so you, you wouldn't put like a, a load on a loading coil on it you could probably I don't know how the antenna is mounted on that, but if it's one of those antennas that can retract into the body of the car, you can just it's shorten not. it. It's not. Well, I mean, it, it could be. I hypothetically, sure. I why mean, not? you could but... you, you you could cut it and then remount it farther down. <laughs> you can shorten with capacitance instead of inductance. Yeah, but then you're you're gonna uh, you're gonna subtract from the FM reception from if you did that, right? Well, what if you what what if you it's could put it design. down farther into the car and then attach your feed point at a farther point up, and you just switch between the two different feed points, one at the end, one a little ways up? I don't know how how exactly that would behave. I it's uh yeah I don't know. I, 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 with the bypass switch, you could bypass the capacitor and still have FM. By the way, I get a lot of questions like these, and I'm always like, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Just, just said, put up a second antenna. Let it just go. Like just let telling. it. Go. Like uh, the more thing. the more you try and make it fit, you're 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 trying to you're trying to fight the electromagnetic waveform of our entire existence. Just let it go. Like and, just put up a second antenna. And just be done with it. But he was like, no, I will not. Do, do I will you, not do um, that. You remember that guy who wanted to put the uh, antenna mount down by the uh, front door on his uh, on his passenger door at, at the bottom of the sill? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Or the yeah. guy who who wanted the feed point that would be subtly close to the wheel that was spinning very fast and would rip the entire yeah. feed line out, yeah. that kind of thing. I, yeah, 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 all that. Like I, I, we we have been. S- through so many questions on the after chat and at the end of the day like just having a discrete antenna that you plug the radio into is the best solution all of the time it's always the best solution it, it, ah. yeah. on my old car i had a uh, antenna mount that was uh it was a lip mount mm-hmm. and i had it clipped onto uh just the edge of my hood right up near the hinge so it was like right in front of me while I was driving, but it was hidden by the pillar, so you couldn't see it from the driving position. And I and, 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 a BHS antenna right in front of your face. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Wildcast... I was running 50 radio. watts on two meters into it, and it worked. I didn't melt my face off. Yeah, so the wild- cataracts are great. <laughs> so Wild Cascadia Radio on the YouTube side, you're right. Like they're learning something, right? So they're going through the process. But the problem is they were like completely unavailable to change. Like they were very rigid on understanding the realities of the electromagnetic spectrum, right? So when you when you deal with that, it's kind of like I don't know what I'm supposed to tell you. Like, do you want good FM reception on the on the broadcast frequencies, or do you want a usable ham radio transmit antenna? Because 
those are diametrically opposed in some cases, right? So it, it was an interesting quandary. And so, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but yeah. I, I, Honestly, I, I, I think the I hardest bit of this project would not be making the antenna work for both receive uh, on uh, on FM and also transmit and receive on two meters. I think the big challenge would be having enough isolation that you don't blow up your FM receiver every time you transmit on two meters. <laughs> Well, they make they make things for that, so that that is true. But um, right, but then you have to have some way of switching it over, and you manually have to switch it every time, etc. Yeah. My question about this exercise is: if we're that concerned with the exterior appearance of our classic vehicle, where is this two meter radio going to go? Inside the dashboard, in the trunk, in like the spare wheel well. Probably under. I'm guessing under the dash, like a you know a proper oh, CB under a type seat. mount. Under, uh, depending on what radio they went with, it would probably be like a. I'm I'm guessing that it would be like a CB type mount that would be under the dash, like mounted facing upward. I'm guessing. Yeah, well, older cars have the. Uh... Uh, usually have a very open dashboard layout that has a big pocket under there where you can just kind of attach things. Oh, yeah, I know. I have a uh, 71 Volkswagen bus that I've been Ooh. ongoing having the debate with myself as to whether I want to drill a hole in the original paint to put the ATOS that's currently mounted on it with a mag mount. But uh, I don't know. My old bus has a AM radio antenna on the front, but... Uh, I never wanted to hook my two meter radio up to it. There you I go. I just gotta psych myself back up. I gotta psych myself up to uh, drill a hole in my car and get back on uh, back on the air with a car mounted radio or an antenna. I think I would be if I was really that interested in doing that. I would be fine with weaker FM reception, and then just like making it work on two meters. I mean, even like the bow thing. With a rubber ducky, it gets FM radio pretty well. I mean, if you're in an area where you get, like, good reception anyways. And then, like, most people now on their vehicles take and get these little uh, six-inch <laughs> antennas to put on that are aftermarket that probably aren't even, even have an element in there. I, there's a guy, I saw a guy the other day with a Jeep, and he had one that looked like a rifle cartridge. And it was probably like six inches tall. And I was like, yeah, you're picking up good FM signal with that. But down by the I don't know. I get pretty amazing reception on my two meter rig with a signal stick, you know, or a handheld. I, uh, you know, with this classic vehicle, I don't know how much of a FM stereo he's got with the classic speakers. And I do actually have an answer, Josh. That's what he needs. He needs to throw a signal stick on there. I got too many kids running. And the, around uh, the, the the receive FM antenna on my car, just stock from the factory, is uh, just like one of those wires. It's like uh, it's like the defrost wires on the rear window. It's actually just another wire in that setup on the rear window. Is the is the receive antenna? All right, I I gotta head out. I think because the kids are all up in my business. <laughs> They're restless. Yeah, we're, we're going to head out here, I think. You guys keep it going. Um, thank you for watching the after chat. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back next week. So get your questions ready for all of you who <laughs> hope. I hope we got your questions answered. But if we didn't, did, please join us next week. Did you get a bunch of uh, pictures for your uh, video that didn't work from last week? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, uh, that was a that was like a test prep. Edison, don't don't mess around. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 leave it alone. Oh, don't. No more. No more. Stop. By the way, I'm wrapping up. Just stop. His pocket size antenna. Uh, is yes. Size. Yes. No, just stop. <laughs> Everybody, just stop. I gotta go. I gotta go. Fun, I gotta go. Guys. I'm not gonna try Number to answer three, this anymore. Three. We gotta go. <laughs> All right. Bye, Josh. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> See ya. Seventy-three, Josh. Hello. Take it easy. Bye. <laughs> All right, everybody on the uh, YouTube and the Twitch side, sorry we were bailing, on, bailing out on you, although we were there for an extra hour, I think. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you again. Enjoy the memes. We'll play you out. Memes. 73. Okay, everybody watch the memes. Here's the memes.
Kids, you can watch the memes. There's the memes. You have to read. Yeah, you have to read this. These are high intelligence memes. You have to read. My kidnappers returning me after listening to me talk about ham radio for two hours. Do you even flex, bro? That's our friend Kyle. He's a funny guy. I wish I was a unicorn so I could stab idiots that don't have a flex radio with my head. Some lid turning up on my frequency. <laughs> Where are you going? Why? Bro, I'm sure you Alright, I have all the kids here now. That's Mandalorian. I'm a ham. Antennas are part of my religion. I'm a ham. Ham antennas? I don't have a necklace. Your yes. <laughs> no ham radio for All right. Lids. All right. <laughs> All right. Get what off. are lids? There are no hop lids. Hop off. Hop off. Hop off. All right. Good night, everybody. See ya. No